Hey, well, hey, Mark, uh, why, why aren't you at the, on the top of the thing there? Right? Al alphabetically, name wise, it should be Mark Robert and Eric Hunley, not Eric Hunley and Mark Robert. Yeah, you, you got you to gotta lobby for a better contract. <laughs> yeah, I, I got to get an agent who can deal with that. I need, I, I need a lawyer uh, like you, Robert, to handle my media shit. Well, I got so there, much. There we go. We fixed it. I got maybe, so maybe. much media crap. <laughs> I got to go up against, uh, um, whatchamacallit, uh, next week, um, Macmillan Books, you know, the British company. So, Oh, what's that about? It's this audio radio drama we're doing on Oswald that's going to be huge um, with actors re reading my, not, not reading the scripts, but performing the scripts, and then all kinds of uh, audio sound effects uh, put in by the designers. It's really complex, but I got to make a deal with McMillan to uh, save, my, uh, <laughs> save my soul here, because well, I'm in the talent department, Robert, as you pointed out. And we, and it's so funny when you were saying that last week, we get vicious. I get like you were describing, you, the creative people go, fuck you, man, you're dead to me, bro. And they, you know, when they send you that contract from hell, Robert, and you go, yeah. fuck you, $5,000 for fucking a, 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 a punch up. Are you insane? You know who I am? Yeah. Creative people don't take it well, Bob. They really no, don't. No, it was funny when I was telling Viva that, and then somebody in the chat was like, "Oh yeah, Barnes is telling Viva he's not creative talent." And I was like, "No, that, that's that's not what I mean. That's not you know." Yeah. But but Viva's much more diplomatic about all that. That's why I think he interpreted uh, all of that much differently than I did. But uh, but part of that is what I couldn't understand is somebody like Boring, uh, terrible name. You know, you know, uh, just just a bad name. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, there's unfortunate names in life. Oh, uh, he's not Wiener. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No. Wait, there's Anthony, worse. Anthony <laughs> Weiner. What about Anthony Weiner? Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's uh, the... uh, there's, there's, there's definitely worse out there, but uh, it's not as good as Trump. I mean, Trump is like you know the, the Trump Bush. card. Bush you know, is you a good Trump. one too. Yeah, Bush. Trump. Yeah. The. Uh, <laughs> uh, but you know, but that's why I was like, you, you know, Boring's Bore. been around Hollywood. You know, he's a failed screenwriter. He should know how not to handle talent, and he did it exactly. Okay. The My theory is that they, he switched sides and went Meglo because he was a failed screenwriter. Ah, he, became, that, ah, he became Harvey Weinstein, Robert. Exactly. Well, you know, That's, he calls himself the God King. Right. He does, he, no, 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 he no. He switched him. sides, yeah. so he went Meglo and For, became... Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, a Weinstein wannabe. I, that's my take on it. You know? makes, well, I was tell, <laughs> telling Eric, Eric earlier, one thing I wanted to, uh, you know, as a thought experiment is, in my experience, if you want to have plausible explanations of history, uh, the best uh, uh, explainers of current events or the most accurate prognosticators of future events, particularly in a sort of template, mm. look to fiction. Look right. to screenwriters and look to novelists, right? Because they have to sit there and figure out, okay, how do I sell a story that sounds credible, right. that seems authentic, that right. if somebody tests it, whether it's a heist or national security or military or some event, somebody's not going to pick it apart and say, "You idiot, you don't understand guns. You idiot, you don't understand this." They that they have to really become experts in their little. Oh field. yeah, yeah. That's why I'm a know-it-all on all these stupid things because I've just had to do these deep dives my whole screen screenwriting life. And you always have to be one second ahead in time in terms of industrialization and crime and all kinds of stuff. you got to be five years ahead when you're writing it. Otherwise, people go, yeah, I read that in the paper today, bro. What's the big deal? So yeah. by natural instinct and design creatively, you have to be in the future. That's why they rounded up all the top screenwriters in Hollywood and brought them down to USC after 9-11 to come up with. Remember this? Remember this secret program, Robert? They yeah, Melter was in that too, right? Yes, yes. They took all the top screenwriters downtown and they said, we want you to come up with scenarios, not for movies, but stuff the terrorists might come up with in the future. These were not movie ideas. They were using their type of creative thinking to tap into it, the intelligence agencies, to see where they would go. So they'd have all of these plausible ideas up on the big board, Robert for themselves going, that's right. This guy Goldstein said they may attack with a herd of sheep one day with bombs in their ass. How about that one, Sarge? You know what I mean? Oh, There's and, another and advantage I, too, because they're not limited by professionalism. And I mean oh. that seriously because 
if you get intelligence agents, how would you attack? They would refer to their training. Oh, yeah. So if you want to think outside the box, you've got to get somebody from the outside who is unpredictable, is going to think in a different way and view the world from the outside who may be attacking. Right. And my the guy, the guy who run, uh, read, uh, wrote Hunt for Red October, remember, who was the guy? The, the Tom uh, Clancy. Clancy was funded in his first book by the Office of Naval Intelligence. I mean, you can't get a better example than Clancy. You know, he was an ONI picked. They literally bought his manuscript, his half-ass written manuscript, and paid him for it. And then he was, you know, their butt boy for ONI for the rest of his career. Oh yeah, to the chat. Uh, I've already done my six hits of uh, great fresh farm milk from Amos Miller Organic Farm dot com <laughs> a little bit early. So yeah, I'm still pumped. I'm still ready to roll. And then the uh, se- uh, but to that other point, I also think they often look to successful fiction for ideas to implement because these guys are not real. Oh, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. They, they read like, okay, what is Condor doing in six days of the Condor, which became three days of the Condor in the movie, the novel six days of the Condor was just too long for Hollywood. So they chopped off three <laughs> days to save money. That's a side issue. He reads books. He reads books looking for coded messages in the books and uncovers a CIA rogue plot to invade uh, Middle East fields and seize the oil. How far ahead of time was that, Robert? Right? Yeah, 19- what's amazing is I saw somebody surprised about General Clark, uh, uh, old disclosure. Clark, when he ran in 2004 for the Democratic Party nomination, said that in the 90s, early 90s, he was sitting around with the top Pentagon chiefs of staff, and they explained why they were going to go into the Middle East. They said, yeah. hey, the, the, Soviet, the Soviet Union has collapsed. This yeah. is the perfect opportunity to go in and grab it all up. Get as much control of that oil as we possibly can. And we don't even have to take control of some of these countries. We can get them to invite us in, That's like right. Qatar did, like Saudi Arabia did, like many, like UAE did. Uh, and, and so, uh, but we will be their sole military. People forget, you know, places like Qatar, that the, the if we want to take them over, we don't have to go anywhere. We're right there. We yeah. have our military right there on the location. We got the, we are their security from everybody else. We can turn that on them on any moment. Uh, on a spin of a dime, the uh, that's when you'll know Saudi Arabia is serious about uh, bridging off. You know, it's not just the currency deals and being politically mad at Biden for outing the fact that they chopped up that guy in uh, Turkey. Okay, and now so, still yeah. like that. Okay, that's okay, a story. Okay. That yeah, the the what was his name? Uh, Eric, you remember? Yeah, Shogi. Yeah, yeah, yeah but Shogi. So yeah. I mean, like there, they could have really used a good writer. That's oh, what yeah. happens when you're only stuck reading the Quran all the time. Right. You end up with a lame version of how to take out a uh, opposing journalist. I mean, they had like a, they even had a bad fake. Remember they only saw like the big fat guy. They were pretending was him that he walked well, out. I mean, the CIA did that with Oswald in Mexico city. They learned from them. Exactly. I mean, look, how did the CIA think they were going to get away with it down there with, with, with That's Phillip. because they had people like E Howard hunt who are bad writers writing it. That's right. Like you can explain, very... like, all the bad ideas in the history of intelligence work comes from failed writers, writers right. who think they're good, but are actually awful. The Jeremy right. Borings of the world. Speaking right. of that, I want to circle around because you mentioned uh, Boring being a failed screenwriter. There's a, a another example of that who became a legendary um, critic. Roger Ebert wrote one movie, as far as I know. Where it was called that? Beyond the Valley oh, of the Dolls. Super- Oh, the, of, the, of the dolls, right? Beyond the yeah, valley. beyond the valley of the dolls, not valley, valley of the, of the dolls. dolls was the original. It, it probably still right. made more money than Jeremy Boring's movie did. Oh, oh it probably did, dolls, but it's fortune. ironic. Yeah. No, but not beyond the valley of the dolls. Even though I enjoyed watching it, so there's also Lots beyond the valley of the super vixens, which was not written by Roger Ebert. Roger no. Ebert had a just so you know had two things. He had a, a, a breast fetish and a, a black fetish. So he had two different fetishes going on. Married a black woman with very large breasts. There you go. <laughs> he took care of one. Took her both in one. It's different than Robert De Niro, who needs him to be black. Oh, boy. That's, that, that's, that's aerial win. bombardment. That's like from up above from a Stratocaster bomb. Yes. I mean, that, yes. They're always the Amazonians who like he that uh, always have some whips at home. Yeah. I mean, everybody's got their own thing. You know, I mean, look, you know, to each their own. But when it comes out in those divorce papers, Robert, that's where the rubber meets the road. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. When, when, no, it's well, funny. remember De Niro got outed when they brought that Amazonian uh, dominatrix in Paris had got right, raided, right, and his right. name was was the most common repeated. Yeah, I mean, I mean, he he broke Charlie Sheen's record. Yeah, 
What are you drinking over there? Hold on, I'm going to take a. I need a big cup of coffee for this show. This is like oh, a white claw. Or... This is going to be a good. <laughs> All right, yeah. See, everybody sees Ziggy Shrugged. I need to put links in there. Ziggy but- Shrugged does great stuff. She she created a bunch of uh, cool stuff. Oh, it looks like we're gonna have our first Viva Barnes meetup in Las Vegas uh, last weekend of February, probably that Saturday. The Saturday, I think it's the twenty sixth, maybe. February Saturday 20th. the twenty sixth of February. I'm going to the Trump again, and I'm gonna. I like the Trump. I'm going back there, Robert. The Trump is great. The best value in Vegas is the trump if you yes, want like yes. if you need baseline affordability yep. i recommend the horseshoe it's replaced bally's they've totally refurbed the place some of those rooms are like 35 bucks a night but okay nice rooms. don't go to circus it, circus that's all i can tell you that's that's, oh, that's, no, that's the craziest that's the place worst. on the face of the earth you I don't know that's an old teamster place but they yes, just haven't yes, upgraded it since yes. they took out the teamsters yes that place is is grand central station that's insane no the trump is is where i would go oh I, beautiful beautiful sweet you know, you know what the backstory why there's no casino there because he didn't want one he's off the strip also on the well, side. well he, he's right across from the wind right but when Wynn moved into New Jersey, back when Trump was big in New Jersey mm-hmm. in the late 80s, Trump was the source of all the allegations that Steve Wynn was mobbed up. And because Trump didn't want Wynn competing with him, right. the Taj Mahal. So even though they're friends, when Trump put up his Vegas one, <laughs> Steve business, Wynn baby. was like, I'm going to return that favor, motherfucker. And uh, prevented him from getting his casino in Las Vegas. Speaking of Trump, where are we with Instagram and Facebook with him? He was uh, they reinstated green- him, is my understanding. They're okay. going to. They said they're going to in the they're upcoming to, yeah. days. Yeah. Right. Okay. So he's going to be back on all these platforms, I assume, Robert, at some point. And whenever bye bye he- True Social, because that's the question yeah. is how much does that does he use those to uh, to elevate True Social? Or does it compete with True Social because he's got billions of dollars tied up in True right. Social? I just couldn't believe that he would not come to the 85 million Twitter followers somehow contractually. I, I could never get my mind around that. If, not he is, if he can find a way that he doesn't hurt him financially on Truth Social. Because, well, you could treat like, it like you guys do with Rumble, for God's sake. He could write yeah, yeah. a oh, part yeah. of a tweet saying, boom, saying to something. Social. Right, that's with the link to the, yeah, the truth right. that's longer and the rest of it. It, it makes no sense. And he sense. could experiment with it. He could see how much it boosts it. I mean, right now, Truth Social's entire value is the fact that Trump's on there. Right. I mean, you look at Getter and Parler, they're going nowhere. Yeah. Um. So it's really critical that- well, Why do you so, think these social media platforms are doing this now to him? That I don't know. I, I mean, know. Either did I. That's, that's what I wanted to ask him because it is kind of odd. He's beginning the campaign season right now. And, you know, it's a year or so out. He's going to begin rallies. And all of a sudden, what, they had a come to Jesus social media uh, meeting? I was, thinking, I was thinking political liability. I mean, right. the fact it, it that they're suppressing, the right. that, no, they're, they're suppressing a presidential candidate. Mm. I, I would think that there may be some ramifications. Barnes, you're the lawyer, but I, I have trouble with that. It's like, so wait, you're, you're saying that this person can't talk. But they're running for office. So I would think that that's a different status. Now, I know they did it to him as a sitting president, which is bad enough. But if you're suppressing them, isn't that illegal? It could be to chill out Republicans in Congress from talking to the, ha- the right, House. Right, right. They're afraid of the House. They're afraid of the House. Again, reason number 99,000 why it was important to take back the House. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. The people who don't know the machinery of politics, I was trying to explain this to them for the past two months about you know, taking over committees. And and it's just a general haze that cats don't know how the machine works, Robert, as you're well aware. They do oh, yeah. not get how the machine works. And no matter well, how many times, they, you know, they go, hey, they're all the same, bro. They're not all the same. Well, it's fascinating is people who've got trapped within conspiracies within conspiracies. Like there's a lot of well-intended people that are being very super critical of the, fi- of the Pfizer Project Veritas report. And they're convinced that, and I started digging in. I was like, okay, some of these people I follow, some of these people I like. And then I dig into some of their descriptions, and it's like gain of function is all mythical. It's never happened. It can't oh. happen. Oh. Uh, and, and that, in fact, you're being tricked into spending more money on it so they can do something else to you. And it's like, okay, hold. this is like, you know, somebody's got caught within the conspiracy, within the conspiracy, within the conspiracy. They're drilling and everybody... down too far. Yeah. Like yeah. I said to Eric when we started this series, if everything's a conspiracy, nothing is. And I've said exactly. that repeatedly. You know, that's got to be the mantra 
of people like me and Alex Jones and yourself, because these people just keep drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling. And it just complete the, the, the deep state would love you to do that. That's why the deep state has been trying to undermine the Zapruder film for 25 years. And the deep state is one of the biggest propagators of conspiracy yeah, theories, yeah, yeah. including alternative conspiracy theories. Like, like QAnon. Yeah, like QAnon. Yeah. Another example really is I hadn't even thought it through until I read Robert Kennedy's book about American values, his family history book. Great book. Where he goes through and says, almost everything you think you know yeah. bad about my family yeah. comes from the CIA. Right. And, and you've right. been hoodwinked all along. Well, that's it's like, why it's so odd that his son, Bobby the Third married a CIA agent. Well, you knew the family. They're going to be constantly trying to infiltrate him. Yeah. I still think Bobby Jr. himself was targeted repeatedly. It's oh, like maybe uh, it's a coincidence that course. certain things happen anytime he started to put his head up. Yeah. But, I, you know, I, I mean, I think even all the way back to introducing him to drugs as a teenager in school. That, I would, that's a stretch for me. That's I mean, stretch. it would it, on paper, but think about when it's occurring, right? If it had occurred, say, in the 1950s, I agree. That's just the nature of upper income lifestyle. But he's targeted after they've killed his uncle and right before they're going to kill his father. And that's what makes me think, if I was looking at it, yeah. who's the oldest son? How would I like to build up discrediting this potential threat politically within the family structure well he did have that gay handler which we could do a show on who was the family handler of him who was his john kennedy's friend um who was his chaperone let's say the mother sent him wherever rfk jr was i forget the guy's name off it's in most of his books i forget the guy's name but he did drugs with him he was yeah. an older man who had a crush on his father on his uncle and his father and him, from what I gather. Um, so that guy might be the guy. If anybody right. was the guy, it's that guy. And I, I forget. I mean, these days, you just can't rule anything out. In no, no, no. You're right. You're right. I can't. You know, you're right. I just, it's some things I just go, oh, oh it, not, not it's that normally dude. a reach. I agree with you. Entirely. Yeah, it's, it's, a, just, it's a reach because we all. The other thing, though, was it, it just kept coming up in his life. So, like, he goes, becomes a state prosecutor. Yeah. And he's on path to run for office. Oh, well, that is, that's right. That's political. Yeah, suddenly they find drugs on him on yeah, a plane. Yeah, no, no, no. That might be true to that because they are trying to do it. But the use of his drugs in college. I mean, right. Now, that's the question is, could it go all the way back? I was like, you'd have to be real nasty. I think they used it as a weapon when he tried to run for, for different. Oh, that, that's entirely plausible. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's I more they, plausible. I just that, don't They weaponized it, but he loved drugs more than any man. But if, if I was running the CIA, yeah. I would target him as a kid. Okay. All right. Yeah. I mean, just, just me. I was it's like, if well, I'm writing a novel. As a screenwriter, I'd say, okay, I'll buy yeah. that. I'll go yeah. with that. That sounds hip. Yeah. It's like, we got to take out this family. We got to right? eliminate them politically. Dude, I, in my mind, I'm injecting his mother in the womb with heroin. So, I, you know, I'll go even <laughs> further. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm saying, well, not only that, uh, I, I would I would stage Chappaquiddick. Uh, I want to make sure to take Ted out of the picture. I would get t some of the top uh, stunt drivers in the country. And put them in cars around Chapel. Exactly. And maybe like, I didn't figure out how to screenwrite it, but maybe you drug up Ted Kennedy so he doesn't even remember what happens. Well, he was and drunk then... and didn't remember what happened. You'd have to do that. I mean, oh, that, that, that's true. by yeah. the way, Chapel Quiddick is a great movie made by some uh, conservative filmmakers. I highly recommended it. But the movie pick of the week for this weekend is Mezrine. This is part one starring Vincent Cassell, one of the great crime movies. If you want to see a great crime movie, this French crime movie is fantastic, um, directed by Riche. And then part two is Mezrine Public Enemy. Comes back for part two. These are my two big film picks of the, the weekend for you guys. I assume in French, English subtitles? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The second one's actually set in the United States. But the first oh. just brilliant crime. French crime thrillers are the best. That's they terrible. really know how to make a movie that is not a large budget explosive movie. The, the original La Femme Nikita. Yeah. And and uh, Vincent Cassel is the man, you know, in, in France doing these things. So uh, highly recommended on those two films. They don't have the money to blow shit up. That's the that's why they have to put money into more thoughtful, you know, <laughs> intrinsic crime uh, scripts. Oh, yeah. It was, it was a great one. It's the one they remade. La Flambeau, Bob. You know, yeah. They, they, oh, yeah. That, yeah. That, that's the original. Yeah. Yeah. That one's great. I mean, because mm -hmm. of the, the thought, the dialogue conversation. Yeah. I mean, I love the the, the sequel with Nick Nolte. I, that's one of my favorites. I've never seen that. I've never seen the, the sequel. Oh, it's one of the, my original, top. the original is is a classic in French crime thrillers. 
you know, any the of these bank heists or jewelry heists, the amount of time they spend on it, you just go like, all right, what is that machine? He's drilling through with some sort of crazy drill, you know, they because they've got stuff over there that we've never seen. And you just go, oh, that's different. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, uh, maybe the chat can remember the one. It's because it's Nick Nolte, I think, is the only American actor. It's an entirely international cast. Mm -hmm. It's all shot along the French Riviera. Uh, it's got one of the greatest soundtracks of all time. But it's maybe an the American chat remake uh, of. Uh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's an no. uh, international cast remake of Le Flambeau Bob. Right, uh, well, right. didn't De Niro do that with Ronan? Was that. Ronan's its own thing. Ronan's right. brilliant because it never tells you what's in the box. Right. Uh, right. It never tells you yeah, what's in the box. I thought that screen. was. And, and don't forget, there's the crazy old boy remake with Josh Brolin and Spike Lee of the classic old boy Korean film, which is unbelievable oh, yeah. classic. The old boy that Spike Lee made was a piece of shit. You got to see the original folks. It's you got to see the That's a rough twist in that movie. It's much better in the original. Let me just put it that way. You know, much better in the original. I don't know what Spike Lee was thinking, you know, the good thief, somebody in the good thief. House. Yes, that's it. That's it. Because oh, he tells uh, a story to the uh uh the the, the care i mean it's, it's really about the redemption of all these different characters which is great and there's a heist and i always love a heist movie where the thief gets away with it it's no yeah. fun if the thief gets caught i want the thief to get away with it. in an alternative life i would be a grand master thief well remember this... you, hell or high water you know with chris oh, yeah. pine i said that i mean that's an, a great bank robbery texas movie with with the the, the amazing ben foster who can disappear into characters, one of the great character actors of our time, who will be remembered years later without being acknowledged currently. But everybody knows Ben Foster is a genius. And Chris Pine, apparently a, a, a very serviceable leading man. Yeah, yeah. I, like, I like Chris Pine a lot. Yeah. I mean, he's everything from Captain Kirk and uh, Star Trek to decent dramatic actor. Well, I really love the score. The score was great. Oh, great. yeah, the score. the score. Edward Norton, Robert De Niro. Couple, what about happened to Edward Norton? He went crazy? Or what, what's the deal with him? No, I first saw him at Yale uh, years oh. ago. But, but he became Motherless Brooklyn. Brooklyn was good. He was the director and oh, screenwriter. Oh, I didn't see that. that. I didn't see that. I don't know you've seen that. That's about, what's his name? The famous, uh, the famous, uh, you know, big power broker in, in New York. Robert the, Moses. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, and Alec my... Baldwin. Alec Baldwin plays him. That's right. That's right. Now, Alec Baldwin, with the enhanced gun charge, Robin, I'm going to try to go down to Santa Fe for the trial and cover it like like Viva does. You know, I'm going to be yeah. like Viva trial guy. You know what I mean? Maybe I'll get you on a hookup for some legal advice. We'll get you on the, on the screen. But is there a possibility? It seems distant that he could be convicted of this. Uh, I think it's all jury. Okay. All jury. All right. uh, but my guess is if you pulled it, you would probably get a pretty even split. Right, right. And the problem for him is the lack of overlap <laughs> on the subject matter and his likability is my guess. Right. Um, is that the uh, he needs to stay away from true gun experts and he needs to probably stay away from true gun haters. Right. Um, and in the area he's in, he's got a good overabundance of both. So that I, I but my guess is that that life experience would shape uh their perception yeah so like the for example if jones had had a fair jury uh, of people that were gun supporters the average verdict uh ha over half the people wouldn't even rule against him and of the half that would rule against him the average verdict was a hundred thousand not a hundred million hmm. not a billion so you know the that's why as soon as we knew that that's why i knew i told jones at the time he's publicly talked about it since it's like they're never gonna let you have a fair verdict they're, right. they're, they're gonna go, they're gonna rig this case from beginning yeah. to end, um, uh, and at the time he didn't really want to believe me because he's an idealist. Down he down really he, he is an idealist. Many of us are like him. I am too. And, and despite being cynical and dark, like he is, I mean, the cynicism is born of the romanticism. Right. The, the cynicism comes from the idealism, you know, because yeah. the yeah. idealism is constantly being shattered over time, so it chips yeah. away at your idealism. But underneath is a vast pool of idealism being fractured all the time you know there's a quote for that scratch um scratch a senate and find a disappointed idealist absolutely i mean great example the, the, the founder if you of scratch, if you scratch a cynic oh, you cynic. will find 
Oh, yeah, no, no, absolutely. Idealist. absolutely, absolutely. A great American example of this, one of the founders of American anarchism, Lysander Spooner, started off as a great idealist, wrote a great text with Frederick Douglass in 1840 called The Unconstitutionality mm. of Slavery. Wow. And they were right, by the way. Wow. Slavery was never legal in the United States, if you wow. really understood it. Wow, that's interesting. By the way, that would have come up in the Wesley Snipes cut trial had he testified on his behalf. Wow. But we found out he couldn't during focus groups. All the people who hated him wanted him to testify. All the people who loved him didn't want him to. And they explained he's a professional actor. He is like anything he says good, we won't believe. Anything he says bad, we'll think definitely indicts him. So it's like, oh, wow, there's no, there's no. I thought I went going in thinking he had to testify because he's famous. Turned out he couldn't testify because he's an actor. Well, hold well, on. We Johnny still, Depp flipped I was just going to say Johnny Depp. Yeah, I was just going to say the same thing about Depp. He he did quite a performance on the stand, didn't he, Robert? He did. He did a great performance on right. the stand. Now, right. I think in Depp's case, he had no choice but to testify. Now, it was a civil right. okay. case, not a criminal case. Okay. But I don't think he gets any verdict unless he testifies. He had to explain back up, facts. back up movie pick of the weekend. Rum Diaries, Johnny Depp as Hunter Thompson, if you want to see um, – Another American film. Is Where? Awesome. Who, who did he meet on that set? Amber Heard. Amber Heard. <laughs> That's base. where it all started. It was all, it was all Hunter Thompson's fault. It, it right. was a fever the dream. Legacy of Hunter it was Thompson. the drugs. The, the drug. fever dream. Yeah. They grab her and, uh, yeah. It sounded, it'd be something Hunter Thompson would have done, by the way. You think? Mm. <laughs> what, didn't hold it. Do? Hold it. The Yiddish word of the day is zoftik. Zoftik which means juicy and succulent, but we kind of use it as For a like heavy. A, a, no, no. We use it as a Ruben-esque description of women. Mm -hmm. uh, Zoftic. Referencing the means artist, not Dave Rubin. What's yes, that? Yes, yes. Referencing yes. the artist, not Dave yes. Rubin. <laughs> the artist formerly known as Dave Rubin, right. Yes. <laughs> right. Okay, so when we go to Vegas, who's going to be there? Uh, is, Nick Ricade is going to be here. Okay, so, so it's... The, uh, your crew, Ricada's crew, and where are we going to be? That we don't know yet. Uh, okay. Tying it down, right. talking to Ariana Jacob. She knows some people. I got a media person that helps with it. She wants to meet. I like her. I want to meet. Oh, up and her. apparently, we've got a locals board member that invited us out to uh, do off roading because he has a huge off roading. Oh, somebody's going to get killed. You know, someone's going to die in that. It's everybody. There's well, always one. Nothing would Robert, just take Come me on. Either. There's always some fat guy that's going to flip over and kill him. Oh, we're not taking everybody. Not taking. Oh, everybody. okay, all right. Okay. The, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the same. Uh, but we may film some of it, and then I got to take Viva shooting to one of the big guns. Oh, right. yeah. Should we? Take, oh, we can't bring my shooting the can't judge. Bring out guns. We're going to get again, guns. I'm referencing the, the gun, guns. not actually shooting a judge in case anybody misclips that. But right. the, but I mean, to see Viva shoot that that gun is massive. That would be fun. <laughs> oh, you mean uh, the anti-aircraft gun? I mean, basically, I don't know if you've seen the judge. It's yeah. like a massive Oh, yeah, handgun. no, no. Uh, yeah, you mean the one out in the desert where you could shoot the cars? Yeah, there, there's, oh. there's that one. There's a bunch of stuff. Oh, I mean, yeah, 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 All the cool gun ranges out right, here. Right, right, right. And you got a whole race car track. You can actually run race cars around. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I wanted to do that one time. Yeah, I, I'd like to shoot that anti-aircraft gun. That would, be, that would be fun. Yep. That would be fun. All right, we have something to live for. Exactly. And right. I even got my, you know, pinky blighters outfit in honor of the Vegas uh, organized crime that we may take a little few tours of. They got a decent little organized crime museum now here in Vegas. Oh, I want to see that. But also, whatever mm. happened to the journalist that was killed by the guy, the politician? Mm. That case uh, needs oh, to be yeah. looked like at. That. that story's gone really quiet. There's oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> what happened to that story? Not exactly. to mention that Jose Weizar, uh, one of our great city councilmen here, was convicted and is facing nine years in prison, refused to cooperate. And we're not done here in L.A. Now the deputy mayor's turn to go on trial. And there's five more people in this Chinese building scandal. And wow. yet they're waiting for someone to flip on the mayor, the former mayor of Los Angeles. And I predict someone will flip on the mayor, uh, the former mayor. So on um, uh, Garcetti, because he was the uh, building czar unofficially in relation to Chinese money here before he became mayor. And it's a whole little cabal of building money, Chinese money, and the whole thing. What's that uh, John Sayles movie that was about that in New York or New Jersey, about explaining urban politics is all about the corruption related to real estate? 
Oh, I want to say late I 80s, know that. early 90s. Right. I should know that. I know John Sayles pretty well. Really good. Um, I, the only thing I, I love, you know, I love a lot of his movies. I didn't like the surprise in the Lone Star movie. Oh, yeah. That's a little weird. But his best, yeah. his two best movies are probably Eight Men Out and Matawan, which yeah. is the Union Pinkerton uh, uh, coal mine movie, which I know you love. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's that fantastic. is a great movie. That's another pick. The of dialogue movie. in his scripts are just really well. He's a great screenwriter. I mean, he's fantastic. Yeah, he you know, he started out with a film called The Return of the Caucus Seven on like a fifty thousand dollar budget, uh, an ensemble picture. You know, where they all just meet in a house and bullshit. You know, oh, war. somebody says you can drive a tank over a car in Vegas. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, for money you could drive a tank over a car in L.A. I mean, they don't <laughs> care what you do here anymore. They made this is unbelievable. I, I don't even know how to explain. Well, it. That, that could be somebody's house though in L.A. Right? They they have now made they just determined <laughs> that jaywalking was racist, so they made jaywalking legal because the fines were too expensive for people of color. So now everyone is jaywalking among the homeless, mostly, and getting hit by trucks flying into the air since this started January 1st. We now have a rash of hit and runs because people are just coming out of every single corner without any fear of jaywalking, which is, of course, as many people know, uh, a racist pastime. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the chat is right. The sales movie I was thinking of was City of Hope. Oh, City of Hope. Yeah, that was a uh, that wasn't as great as, but yeah, I remember. Well, what's good at was it introduced. Like I didn't understand how much real estate dominated urban politics. Yes. Oh early. yes. Oh yes. Oh yes. Yeah. And Trump understands that better than most. Oh yes, he does. He had to deal with Ed, Ed Koch. He had to deal with all these people. Well, he had to deal with the boys that control the uh, the concrete. But, but, but that's separate. Yeah. I mean, there's the Italian thing, but there's other levels besides the Italian thing. I mean, that's just one level he had to deal with. He had to deal with Ed Koch. And all these different cliques, Robert, including the you know Robert Moses type cliques and these other development guys oh, yes. who are other Trump. His type ability people. to manipulate and maneuver through New York is impressive. It is, it, you Very have to impressive. be really slick, and I guess that's explained in the Art of the Deal, which you read as a kid. Yep. Uh, at the age, yeah, of my five. two favorite books, that and Bobby <laughs> Kennedy's book. His dad, uh, I'm sure, helped a little bit with some of the knowledge and influence wasn't his dad into oh, real did, estate but his as well dad was like his dad stayed out in queens his dad was sure. didn't want to go into manhattan his dad, his told dad him built one of manhattan. the great co-op apartment building complexes of all time which every one of my relatives moved to called trump village down by coney island and once they were open unbelievable for working class families robert mm. um beautiful multi-story apartment buildings with all the facilities i think there's three or four of them still standing uh, down by Coney Island. And ev all my aunts and uncles, my grandparents moved there. And it was great because when you visited your relatives on the Sunday, you could go floor to floor and see your Aunt Ruthie. You could see your grandfather. It was fantastic. And that was from Trump's father uh, who built it and told him not to leave the boroughs, that there's yes. plenty of work in the boroughs. That was, it wasn't he, so much not. He didn't want him to go into the vicious backstabbing of Manhattan exactly. real estate. And he thought downtown Manhattan and sent was all real was risk because people yeah. forget. In and he's 60s, right. He was right. He was right. Seventies, it was going down. Yep. All the rest. Trump made a huge gamble by investing in the seventies, and then he profited from the eighties. So I mean, he took a massive. People don't realize those were massive gambles when Trump. Well, was look what he went through: the multiple bankruptcies, all the you know service that he had to go to. His father. well, that's what Trump figured out. If you owe a lot of money to the bank, the bank owns you. Once yeah. you owe them enough, uh, even more money, you own the bank. That's right. Because That's they right. need the only way they get that money back is to be back in business with you. That's why that attorney general lawsuit against him in New York was so preposterous because there is there is no victim. Completely, it, completely. It, it, Not it's only absurd. That, it's absurd. It, if you're, it's it's like all the foreign governments that don't don't trust America anymore because we weaponize the dollar. If you're a real estate investor and you do you want to really risk New York just politicizing you on the turn of a dime? No. I mean, it, it's they are scaring real estate cash away from the real estate king of New York, of America, which is New York City. Right. Well, here, I mean, they've taken over in L.A. They've taken over every um, ho every hotel is now a homeless shelter. I mean, it's crazy. No, they're forcing it. it it's like a, it's a, almost a form of takings. Yeah. 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 And they're, and, they're, and they're still hassling landlords about evictions here. I don't know how that's legal. That they could, you know, tell landlords you can't evict someone for non-payment of rent. I don't, I don't know what court is going to uphold this. I mean, 
you, you have private property and nobody pays rent. You can't evict them. I mean, and so far the courts are just coming up with excuses not to do anything about it. Yeah, it's going to have yeah. to get to a higher court before somebody finally steps in and says no more of this nonsense. Well, they they have they're going to run out of hotels. They're going to run out of tourism, and they've got a strange small event coming here in a couple of years called the Olympics. Now this is where the rubber is going to meet the road. Nobody's talking about this. And every hotel is not going to be available because the homeless are living in them. And this is going to be fantastic when the world descends on L.A. for the Olympics. Well, didn't well, they I mean, have a problem in Rio and they, um, shall we say, got rid of the homeless and not necessarily a polite fashion? Are they going to do like a Mayor Daly style with Chicago <laughs> for the Obama convention? You know, where this purge all the... Uh, uh, but that's the question. Will LA do that? Or is it so political now that they it's too won't? Political. It's too political. Yeah. They can't. They, I mean, they have physically taken these hotels almost by force. They have the mostly Mexican staff still working in these hotels. And there's people living in there with pit bulls and drug dealers. And they've taken over the entire hotels. And they're still running as hotels, but with no guests, just homeless. Yeah. There's no and, and there's encampments everywhere. I mean, they're doing this in part of the UK. They're putting up uh, illegals that immigrate there into hotels. And there's all these complaints from neighbors and people in the community saying, because well, of I mean, look at it from the hotel's point of view, you've got hundred percent occupancy guaranteed for whatever it is, 200 a night, a hundred a night, whatever you're, whatever you want to broker a deal in perpetuity. Yeah. I mean, well, why wouldn't you do this? The entire risk of the hotel business is what vacancy, right? You eliminate vacancy. Well, that's a nice business model. Thank you very much. Who's paying for it? The city. Where are you getting the money? From the taxpayers. Okay, thank you. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, you know, it sounds like some medication that went out recently. What? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a good plan, right? No, all, I mean, all upside, no downside. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, government yeah. pays right. for every single well, what, room. Called, what was that called? Some type of uh, capitalism where it was rigged. What's yeah, that? corporatism. 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 Crony okay. capitalism. Crony capitalism and corporatism. Well, yeah. the other thing is, like, when people were shocked by the Project Veritas video, I was like, this is right out of Viva Vendetta, going back to scripts to turn reality. They create the virus mm -hmm. that they already have the vaccine for to create power and, and enrichment. They probably like, saw that movie and said, hey, let's do this. This looks that's good. I mean, what they did. I mean, that's how most of it was like. It was like when they put Zelensky up there in front of that 1984 screen. It's right it's out a, of the movie 1984. I mean, yeah, it, it was somebody it, who looked at the movie and thought, that looks cool. That looks somebody dramatic. said, yeah, let's, let's do this. This looks good. Man, they're they're whacking everybody. The CIA chief goes over there in the next within a week. The interior secretary in in minister who in Ukraine, yeah. the interior minister runs their secret police and the right. ass off and right. battalions and all the nasty neo Nazis. He and his whole in his in his whole key crew shot down in a helicopter crash. They haven't explained. And then his key media guy is dismissed. Then he yeah. then he dismisses half dozen other people. Well, don't, don't, don't forget the key media guy went on television revealing that that apartment building was from, from their own air defense systems and then hassled Zelensky for going after the Russian Orthodox Church in yes. Ukraine. So, I mean, either he's in jail, dead, or, or living somewhere else because that guy disappeared pretty quickly in this incredible democracy they call Ukraine. I mean, this is a model, you have to understand, of democracy <laughs> that knows no bounds. The elections it, during the war, it's like Abraham Lincoln is running it. They, they have elections during the war, but there's only one candidate, Zelensky. Yep. Oh, it's extraordinary. And basically they took out all of Zelensky's key aides. Yeah. So that Zelensky's now even more dependent on well, the West. My theory is this is from NSA eavesdropping on their private conversations around the country and then putting them on a list, coming yep. to Zelensky and said, these are the people who are now talking among themselves that this war is going to be over soon. I think that's their right. crime is right. simply talking rationally. I don't think they were no. plotting a coup against Zelensky. Oh, not Ooh. at all. Who would want that stupid job? And, and I think it's the U the U.S. government and the West wants control of everybody connected to Zelensky, so he's yeah. always the loyal puppet. They want no yeah. people really loyal to him next to him. Yeah, because the CIA shows up with the list. Where did he get the list? The list is yeah. from NSA eavesdropping of these people's conversations. All yeah, it's part of the problem of Ukraine depending on U.S. military tools and surveillance for conducting the war is U.S. military surveillance can be used against the Ukrainians. Which just happened. Yeah. Yeah, which just happened. Now, explain Poland to me, because I don't understand 
the deal with Poland. Ah, I'm completely so confused. The long too. history is yeah. way back. The yeah, Poles yeah. with the Lithuanians uh, yeah, yeah. ran Western Ukraine for like 400 right. years. Right. And, uh, and number one, number two, the Poles' historic adversary hasn't been Germany. It's been Russia. Well, but, but, all- again, they're not really tight with Germany now either, Robert. Oh, no. Oh, no. Right. In okay. fact, I think they're trying to leverage Germany. Yeah. Because it's the Germans that don't want the Poles expanding. They have no interest in the Polish-Lithuanian Empire returning. They have no interest in that whatsoever. And German military officials are not liking the Poles talking about... Let me ask you this. When did the Green Party become the War Party in Germany? Because I missed something here. In the 80s, I mean, what what happened to the... Oh, reversal. The, uh, I mean, it, it, my theory, almost all of this reflects the professional managerial class taking over politics in the West right. and that they've corrupted it at every level. They've corrupted every party, the Democratic Party right, and right. the Republican hierarchy in the United States, right. the Tories and the Labor Party in the UK. 1950s, right. a majority of Labor Card Party members in Parliament were actual labor union guys, right, actual right, coal okay. miners, laborers, et cetera. Today, I think it's less than 5%, right. uh, maybe even fewer. They don't have any working class members that are right. actually in the- that well, are how, Let me ask you this. How would the average Russian uh, feel watching German panzer tanks with the, shield, with the cross it's, on the side rolling- It's a godsend through. to Russia politically. Because they're, they're like, hey, we get a sec. The last time you boys sent us your, your, your leopards, we took care of them. We're going to take care of them again. The All the old great war rhetoric is coming back on scale. Yeah. And, and they keep doing things that invite that great war, what the Russians call the great war, which is deeply embedded in their psychology. But, all but their I mean, memorials. To, to, to physically, true. visually see the Iron Cross on the side of a German Leopard 2 tank rolling through uh, wherever you want to roll them through. I don't know, but, uh, uh, near the Polish border on television, on the news for the average Russian, they're going to go ballistic. Completely. They're going to lose their shit. Completely. I mean, and, I, I, it, is it intentional? Is it being provocative? I mean, what is the deal? That That's a good question. The other aspect is the uh, the Poles, uh, you know, the uh, have always wanted to take back Western Ukraine. And that appeared to coordinate correspond to a deliberate targeted effort by the Ukrainians to conscript almost all the able-bodied men that are of Hungarian ancestry and Transcarpathia. So they're trying to take out any opponents that could be a problem either for the Ukrainian regime or if a Polish regime went into Western Ukraine. Uh, Putin has long thought Poland wanted this. He floated it as a half joke, half seriousness about 10 years ago. How about uh, you guys take back Western Ukraine? The well, uh, the, Korsky, you know, the former defense minister who's married to Applebaum, basically said that years yeah. ago that that was their goal. Absolutely, yeah, people it's, don't it's know that's the Sikorsky Polish former it. Polish secretary married to American App and Applebaum, who is a massive neocon deep state affiliated official here in the West. This is um, the Hollywood of war. These people, yeah. you know, they're all like the nepotistic war party of all these cats inter interlocking you know, all across Europe and the United States. And we have something between a parody, a satire, and a horror film, like all mixed into one. It's Dr. Strangelove. That's why Dr. Strangelove is so brilliant. It managed to be a satire, a parody, and a horror film all wrapped a, into well, one. Well, Wag the Dog also by Barry Levinson to a lesser oh, yeah. extent. You know, that, uh, talking about scripts, when I saw, so you, you, you Wag the Dog comes out early 90s, right? Yeah. Clinton gets into trouble with a sex scandal. Monica Lewinsky looking at impeachment. All of a sudden, he decides we need to go bomb Serbia, right in the middle of all this. We need to go bomb Yugoslavia. But my favorite part was, remember in Wag the Dog, the way they set up the original story is a woman refugee in Albania, in the Balkans, fleeing attacks. I swear to God, CNN had the exact same, I've been trying to find this video clip forever, the almost identical clip. And the funny part is they had it snowing when it wasn't snowing at that time of the year. Right, right. Wow. So they did like a rundown poor man's B-movie version of what it would be classic Clinton to say, ha ha, this is what I can do. I'm going to take Wag the dog. I'm going to do it for real. And you <laughs> sh- and you smuckles, you smucks are going to fall for it. Wow. Well, that could, that could very well be true. I mean, the propaganda <laughs> on this thing has been on steroids since the day we started this. I mean, uh, it's just been astounding, the the levels of levels of levels. I mean, where the Ukrainians are now invading Moscow tonight, apparently, in some theoretical propaganda war. I they're mean, they're going to take back Crimea. They're going to. Yeah, yeah, I mean, the idea that they're going to send, you know, 24 or 34 Abrams tanks 
The Russians have 10,000, 10,000 battle-ready Russian tanks, 10,000. The idea that, that Germany is going to send 20 Leopard 2 tanks as, as you know, possibly the Duran is pointing out, or, or Alex, Greek Alex has pointed out, that this may not be for offensive reasons, but for up by the Polish border to carve out that bubble that the, the Sikorsky and the Poles have been talking about, Robert, that this may not be thrown into the cauldron of battle because they'd be blown to smithereens. Maybe they're going to use them to create a, you know, a phony a corridor, you know, a, a amnesty corridor, humanitarian corridor where the UN comes in and blah, blah, blah up there by the Polish border. Well, guess who doesn't know how to run work leopards? The Ukrainians. Ooh. Guess right. who has been practicing on both leopards and Abrams for the last two years? The Poles. The Poles so know the how to run them. But we've brought the Ukrainians to a bizarre place to train them called Oklahoma. So now Thank Oklahoma you. is now the, the tank battle training ground for the Ukrainian knuckleheads to learn as quickly as possible. How to they run always these pick these border south places. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy stuff, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. You, you look at where they brought in all the Cubans. It was yep. all these border places across the south where yep. it was right outside, you know, up in the swamps in Florida or some, you know, some bar border town. And I mean, it wasn't until I read James Elroy's American tabloid trilogy. I had never put together the combination of unusual robberies of various, uh, uh, you know, national guards, arms depots and their proximate location to where various Bay of Pigs, Cuban style oper operatives were running their camps. They did the uh, same thing with the Dalai Lama when they brought in the Chinese and Dalai Lama into the mountains of Colorado to train them to be paratroopers to go back and fight the Chinese, to the, which didn't go very well. Very, really unknown Bay of Pigs operation that involved uh, Chinese surrounding uh, the Dalai Lama after we got him out of Tibet. They, they and part of the getting him out of Tibet. The training was we brought these guys over here and they didn't know anything about flying in a plane, let alone parachuting out, Robert. So they did it in Colorado at an old camp. And for people who thought Dalai Lama was just a peace, love and sweet dude, look at his involvement in that uh, in the Nixium scandal. Remember that, Eric? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> There's also um, speculation that Gandhi was a psychopath. I mean, if you want to talk about. Peace love. I've always and liked Gandhi, so I haven't, you know, I haven't done a deep enough dive. But well, all until, of his until good. you've drank your own urine, you can't relate to Gandhi. That's what I always say. You know what I mean? You're drinking that milk, and you love the milk. Gandhi loved drinking his own urine. So you got to give him that, a tip was, of the uh, hat. Tip of the hat. Oh, range. Of that. You know, he had range. He had range. He, he liked young girls, and he liked drinking his own urine. I mean, let's face it. Gandhi was well, a freak. He was a freak. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> You know, I mean, did he help free India? Yeah, I'm sure he did. You know. Well, ironically, that's part of why he was able to. I mean, psychopathy is not necessarily automatically evil. They have the ability to look beyond empathy and say, okay, this is going to work for more people. Do you think? Wow. Uh, Sigmund Hunley with the analysis. I like that. Very good. I only have a, a quick moment to slip in. I no, that was great. Out. Sigmund <laughs> Hunley. I like that. Whoa. <laughs> Do you think oh. Spielberg could have made the Indiana Jones that dealt with the whole history of Indian cults today? Probably Ooh. not, right? Oh, interesting. Well, it depends. Is that a, a really a film market right now? Because we care more about China at the moment. As soon as India steps in and is the film market. However, Elon did uh, apologize to India or, you know, uh, remove the documentary for India. So yep. I guess it's either India or somebody named Blue that he does things for. I don't know. Oh, yeah, Liza Blue. That, that's an unfortunate story. You know, we had her on because I only cared about the fact that while she was on Twitter, she was doing a great job exposing sure, uh, CP important. on Twitter. I didn't care about her backstory. But, you know, going and getting all these people canceled when they're investigating her backstory was really dumb. It's like, Come how on. do people not know the PR of this? The, the, people not know ridiculous. the Barbara Streisand effect. People not know that's going to amplify the number of investigators times 10, and you're going to unleash every dweeb, on on kiwi farms and every nerd and geek out there to right. do deep dives on your background and, and whoop, whoop, you know unless whoop, it's whoop. impeccable you're in trouble it's far from impeccable my friend well that's a criticism i have barnes and i brought it up today um when we did the show with david and nate i think the right has the same freaking problem and a little touch of hypocrisy mm -hmm. that they like to tokenize specific people 
who I would argue are grifters. Like Eliza Blue is a me too person. So, mm -hmm. hey, she's me too on the right. There are other people and they get protected. They can kind of do whatever the hell they want. Because haven't you noticed that some big names are very quiet Look, about this situation? You know, my beef about her is that she took Elijah Blue's name. Elijah Blue Allman uh, goes mm -hmm. stage. He's a close, you know, Cher's son, a friend of mine, um, Greg Allman's son, goes by Elijah Blue. That's what she usurped. She's had multiple names, and now she's usurped his stage name. That's his middle name is Blue, and his first name's Elijah. But he's been going in Malibu and Hollywood circles, as she's well aware as Elijah Blue for t over 20 years as a performer. Mm. And, you know, he has a band called Dead Z. Uh, the guy has a, a a life, you know, with that name. And she kind of like shaves it off as to Eliza Blue. And I that's why I was thinking, I go, why am I hearing this name all of a sudden a few weeks ago? And then I, I saw you guys having her on and these other people. And I went, wait a minute, this is she's taking the guy's name. And, you know, well, you know not, She's connected to now. She's connected to all the lawyers involved in the Epstein case. Right. So well, wait till like, Cher finds out about it. That's what I said to Eric this week. Wait till Cher finds out about this grifter using her son's name. She will change her name once again in the next couple of months, I predict. Oh, well, yeah, I can see that. But like she's the committee that the group that she was a secretary on, that's the lawyer is Bradley Edwards. He was the lawyer who helped out Jeffrey Epstein. Wow. But an associate with Virginia Guffrey. But I've often had some questions about aspects of those cases. It's like what aspects were true and what aspects were which which defendant has deep pockets? Because like when they went after Dershowitz, nothing about that story made sense to me. Nope. Nope. And ultimately, Virginia Guffrey, the big victim of the Jeffrey Epstein stuff, ended up making a mea culpa and saying her allegations were all wrong about Dershowitz. Hmm. And so it, knowing that legal world you get that that line starts to blur a little where sometimes it's about real abuse issues, just like personal injury lawyers. And sometimes it's about making money. Yeah. Um, and I'm a little concerned that that line's blurring by a lot of big names in that space. It's almost like a limited hangout. Like uh, yeah. they're, they're virtuous, except when they're not like exactly. we, we have to have allowances for the exceptions here. I think Derek well, got like, into I, that pissing match with their attorney. That was, you know what I mean? Uh, that's mm -hmm. when all of a sudden he ends up on the list. You know, when he started fighting with that yes. guy who represents yeah. the girls, all of a Correct. sudden he turned on Dershowitz. I, I've had some questions about a lot of those cats. So, oh, yeah, yeah, no, he he is get very sketchy. He was a Clinton <laughs> lawyer, don't forget. Yep. Well, yeah. and, and when you look at the way I say it, when I was in personal injury practice, normally, you know, you're taught in law school, the way you look at a case is, did somebody do something wrong? Were you injured because of that? Uh, what are the legal remedies? Uh, and, and, but in personal injury work, it was just the opposite. You start with number three, who's got the money to pay? And then you say, is there an injury? Is there somebody we can sue for? Is, well, there, is there some claim out there? But you start with who's got the cash? Greatest personal injury movie of all time, lawyer movie, The Fortune Cookie, Walter Matthau Jackson. Oh, that's a great film. Matt, directed Matt by the so great good. Billy Wilder. <laughs> Uh, was there a, was there a movie where Matt Thau was bad? I mean, it's like everything. Well, then, no, there are yeah. some. There are some. Well, when he, like a, a his grandpa. gambling debts. When his gambling debts got big enough, he yeah, was doing. Yeah, he's playing like a grandpa in a couple of movies. I think not so good, but yeah, I mean, the fortune cookie, Billy Wilder. Wow, wow, fantastic movie. Absolutely. Well, you know, the great gambler who got his sentence commuted by Trump. Who was uh, uh who was once on sixty minutes recently did an interview with Brett Musburger at Vegas Sports Information. Brett Musburger, exactly. Or he actually did it last year, and he's releasing a book and stuff. <laughs> what was fascinating is I was sitting there talking with Charlie Sheen, and Sheen brings up this guy's name, and I was like, "Did?" Uh, and Sheen explained, "This guy, you, this great gambler, you Sheen is a front. He had Sheen place bets with a bunch of bookies in California." Because Sheen had a legendary reputation, like uh, Walter Matthau, uh, for for losing cash, uh, right. for being a terrible gambler, terrible right. gambler. Right. And I was like, that's brilliant. Everybody would take the bet thinking it was Charlie's bet. It wasn't Charlie's bet. And that's how this guy hosed a bunch of bookies that had screwed him over for the year. Well, so remember, Eric, we were talking about how uh, Norm MacDonald got into big-time gambling by losing so much money, winning the first night. 
and then having this ast astounding winning streak at the beginning of his gambling career. Well, he, yeah, okay, That's there's a lot with way. Norm. Yeah. 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 If you're smart, you deliberately you, – you, if you look at it, some big money whale comes in, yeah. you make sure he wins early. And yeah. if he's the manic depressive personality that tends to That's like Norm, gambling, that was probably Norm Macdonald. Yeah. They get him hooked. And, and yeah. what it is is they actually, if you talk, the way you know a true compulsive gambler is their select, what I call memento memory after the movie. They have pure memento <laughs> memory. They remember all their wins and none of the losses, losses. They just literally don't remember. Wow. They don't understand why their wallets thin. Wow. They, it was like, I don't know how that happened. But uh, because I, I, I mean, do that with girlfriends, I, I try to block out the bad ones, but that's just me. That's just me. <laughs> Norm was a freaking genius, though. And uh, oh, no, oh, absolutely. I love Norm. Yeah, absolutely. I love Norm. My absolutely. favorite, still favorite routine of all of his. I mean, I liked all the Clinton jokes, all the other stuff, but my favorite route, and you know, Demi Moore, who he went after all the time, but the uh, uh, the OJ, uh, he made all the OJ jokes, but my favorite one of his was still the Germans. The, oh, the, the, oh, yeah, the, yeah, the yeah, farewell yeah, to yeah. Letterman. Yeah, yeah, the farewell to Letterman when he's like, you know who scares me? The Germans. Yeah. Because these people went to war with the world, not once, but twice. Yeah. Well, and I think, think there's a guy that goes, I got, 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 got. <laughs> I, I think the Germans' next beef, if this thing ever gets settled with the Russians, is going to be turning towards France with all their nuclear power plants that the Germans have gotten rid of. And an inch over the border are going to be these glowing nuclear power plants. And I think the Green Party, a.k.a. the War Party, is going to start World War III with France over nuclear. I predicted this 15 years ago. I said this was going to happen. If, they, if we ever survive this Ukrainian thing. If we ever do so, which is doubtful. Will we return the Alsace? Return Alsace. Right. Uh, they yeah, the not gonna, they're not going to be happy with an entire nuclear-powered nation next door to them after they've gotten rid of firewood, coal, oil, nuclear, and they're literally plugged into some grid in outer space. Did you hear? Know. Uh, you know, I was taking a deep dive in all the Graham Hancock stuff because the Ancient Apocalypse series is on uh, Netflix, which was interesting and fun. And came across a story I had never heard, which is this uh, eclectic ge uh, a geological engineer for the Air Force who wrote a book in 1963, published in 1965, that was then suddenly classified mm -hmm. and removed from publication in 1967 and was only partially released in 2012. A version of the book had been published by the same author in 1993. What was weird is this author has almost no footprint at all. Wow. And I was like, I never, I did not realize the CIA went and took books off the market that concerned them, right, classified right. them, and removed them from publication for decades. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, absolutely. absolutely. In fact, there, there's agencies that write books. There's a Kennedy assassination book called Farewell America that was written by either French intelligence or German intelligence and came over here in the 60s or 70s. But yeah, I mean, it, it, there's books about the assassination of RFK uh, by William Turner, the ex-FBI agent that were taken off and burned, you know, completely destroyed by the agencies. Absolutely. Yeah, they're, but, they're, it's amazing. There's still hidden books out there. Oh, you know, yeah. These, oh, I, that's my that's my addiction is <laughs> digging out hidden books with the PayPal fund that these people send me because there's books in hiding that, you know, Eric found me one. You know, I was looking for six seconds in Dallas. You know, Eric sent me a copy of it. And there are books out there that are missing in action in warehouses that are, are available if you can dig through all the, the roughage to get to them and pay somebody. Uh, yeah, they took those books off the market for a reason. But you, library yeah. sales, there's a lot of books that turn up in library sales yes, through the true. country. Yes. They're buried in some isolate. You know what? Right. That's what, by the way, Ralph Nader told me once. So I was like, you know, this was after 04. Nader's been brutalized. A lot of his allies have abandoned him. He's the he's persona non grata because he says the Uniparty is is the problem mm -hmm. that all the regulatory agencies have been captured by the people they're supposed to be regulating. And all of a sudden, people have been championing him for decades, run away from him and attack him. Michael Moore proves his bona fides by attacking him in 04 oh, yeah. after championing him in 2000. Uh, but I was sitting there talking to him after he'd been through all these legal political wars, and uh, and I, I mean. That's a guy. The, the way GM went after him is so funny. They spent no time understanding Ralph Nader. They kept sending uh, prostitutes to him 
in places that were completely unlikely to, to ever seduce Ralph Nader. If you wanted right. to trick Ralph Nader, you needed to send like an undercover nerdy personality into the library, right. not, not the obvious bimbo at the grocery store and the other places. I mean, those guys only got caught because they were so lazy. They were following Nader into Congress itself. And that's when they got caught. But I was there talking to Nader and Nader was like, oh, you don't have to worry, Robert. You don't have to worry. Do you understand libraries? Libraries all around America and the world. He goes, any kid can walk into a library. As long as any kid can walk into a library, the world is safe. The world will be good. Yeah. You know, that's fascinating. But then you stumble into a story. You think about things like this. You think, yeah, in some library is some book the CIA has burned and destroyed because mm -hmm. the library got it before they did it. Yeah, I got into an argument with my Marxist librarian here <laughs> in Hollywood. We're talking normal libraries, Mark. You know, well, like everywhere of, else in the country, one of the, largest, country. one of the largest library <laughs> systems in the country, the L.A. public oh, library sure. system, probably has more books than any any city in the country. And I said, where are all the JFK assassination books? And she said, there's none none in the library. None. Zero. And I, she says, well, they steal them. I goes, who's they? And she goes, you know. I go, no, I don't know. Who are they? And she says, the people who, you know, the assassination buffs. I said, well, what do you do when they steal a regular book? She goes, well, I reorder it. And I go, why don't you reorder these? She said, I'd rather not. And it, it just went in circles. She had no explanation. You know, she took them off the shelves. They were stolen or whatever. She just never replaced them. You know what I mean? And you could go in there and not know anything about what Eric and I have been discussing for over a year because the L.A. Public Library refuses to put these books on the shelf. You know, the interesting thing is how many of the libraries are originally founded by Andrew Carnegie out of guilt because he grew up with his father was a radical late Luddite, you know, challenging the oh, technology. Yeah, yeah, just yeah. Knowing that. yeah. And he always like whenever he was about to break a union, he always had to go on vacation. So that he wouldn't know about the nasty work. Yeah, he was, was kind happening. of a coward, wasn't he? Complete. Well, he coward. had his partner Frick. Frick did all the. Um, yeah. for, Frick for was Frick. the hammer, right? Yeah, exactly. And Carnegie just pretended he didn't know it was happening, but out of guilt is why he funded all the libraries. Right. He was like, okay, this is my uh, exculpatory, explicating uh, effort to expunge my uh, responsibility for a bad life. I'll give free libraries to the working class kids of the world. Wow. That's yeah. where that's where the saying came, Dino Might, right? The black yeah, exactly. from the black <laughs> from the black sitcom. Well, that's fair enough. <clears throat> and then you have Rockefeller who would just build entire towns or fake towns. Yeah. That's how I explained to someone what the Daily Wire contract was. I said it's a Rockefeller contract. And they're like, Rockefeller contract? I was like, yeah, a contract so one-sided, there's no other way to explain it. You right. Know, right. Don't you find it suspicious, Robert, that Pete Buttigieg they, they pulled him up in New Hampshire to be ahead of Biden, which showed you the 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 memory and the ghosts of Eugene McCarthy coming ahead of LBJ in the 1966, 68 New Hampshire primary. Wasn't that a ghost of that, uh, Robert? I, I think it was two things. It was uh, the deep state's reminder to Biden that they yeah. can humiliate him still. Yep. And it shows what I've been speculating, that their favorite candidate is Booty Booty Gay Gay. Uh, no, no doubt about it. I, I am predicting that February 7th, he's going to pull an LBJ and say, I will not run. I will not mm -hmm. seek office of the presidency in the next election. I, I, this is my 50-50 prediction on the February 7th thing, because this thing's building up. This thing is building up to a head. And by the State of the so Union, he doesn't care about it, that, that he only cares about America, not his personal legacy. He'll right. need the Justice Department to secretly sign off on a pardon yep. deal for his son and family. Right. Because don't forget, RFK does not run until LBJ gives that speech. Well, you know, they're already planning the basis of the classified part. New York Times today was saying, isn't it maybe we just overclassify things? Oh, isn't they always say that's an amnesty to everybody. Right. That's um, they always say that, you know, remember when what's his name? The Clinton advisor from the State Department went in and stuffed. He stuffed the documents down his he pocket. He stole from the National Archives. He directly went in and, and, and on stole, camera, his pants he shoved them down his pants. Yep. I think he got like a six-month suspended sentence or whatever. He was the only guy ever convicted of this because it was yep. so brazen. It was Sandy so, Berger. Who, right, Sandy Berger. I forgot. Yeah, he goes in there and stuffs the documents down his pants in the National Archives. Wow. By the way, I've got a question for you. Do you think it might be of use, like – Let's say that right about the time Biden could be resigning and moving on, that Trump happens to 
appear and be back on social media and 100% wall-to-wall coverage would be anything that comes from Trump on the day, just like old times. So don't look over here. Look what that son of a bitch is saying right now. Oh, that, that I don't know. I, I don't know. I think the pressure and the leaks are going to come out of Harris's office between now and February 7th. They're going to increase. They're going to involve corruption. They're going to involve Hunter. They're going to involve Biden's health. You're going to see oh, sure. e- even King uh, Charlemagne the King. Charlemagne the King God. Had, a sh- had a show in the in, 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 what's that? It's the God. Charlemagne the God. I'm sorry, I take that back. But not the God King. Just the, the God. God. Charlemagne the God had a show <laughs> talking about Biden's dementia and with, with guests fighting back and arguing among this black intelligentsia. So it's already out there in the zeitgeist, Robert. The question is, how does Booty Booty Gay Gay get rid of Kamala Harris? Well, that's that's in episode nine. We're not even up to episode one yet. Oh, it's classic democratic debate. How does the gay man get rid of the black woman? It can't be done. I don't think it could be done because the 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 homophobia in the black community is enormous. <laughs> that's part one. Part two is as a black woman, like I said, she's the base of the Democratic Party. Uh, they want this guy for obvious uh, bureaucratic deep state reasons, but he doesn't have enough, uh, you know, genetic I think gender. You got to work with Merrick Garland. And get a domestic domestic terrorist to do something. I think. I well, I I, I don't know about that, but I could see a Harris Budigig uh, combo. Take, yeah, yeah, I mean, absolutely, I that, absolutely. I think that is the most likely. Yeah, 2020 yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely, right absolutely. And and if she moves up the notch, they're gonna they're gonna push him into the VP, and I, and who knows if the House will approve him? You know, the, you'd have to. The pressure on the House would be enormous, Robert, for approval mm. of the Vice President at that point, unless. They could come up with just, you know. Uh, well, maybe that's what Manchin is thinking. He'll be the compromise VP. That's uh, why he's over the World Economic Forum. Uh, he's making his pitch. He's thinking we can get a few Republicans. And, and I have another him. choice for you. Eric Adams out of New York. The former, yeah. the former Adams New- is telling the aliens, we got no space for you. You immigrants, uh, we got no space for you. We can't shelter you. Uh, interesting. I mean, when was approach. the last time a mayor of New York went to El Paso, Texas, to overlook the homeless situation? That's true. Right. I mean, how I, weird I is that? See, I can't see Kamala having an Eric Adams under. No, 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 no. I agree. But this is oh, some yeah. force that's pushing back against her. Right. They right. need a, a black Who are their alternatives. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. An urban alternative to her. I don't know what happened to Cory Booker. I mean, he he's somebody did. He's just somebody threw out uh, Julian Castro, which I'd forgot about. Uh, I, su- I suggested him. Castro because of yeah. the of the of the Latino West Big political mafia South, in Texas, yeah, Southwest Latino male segment that the Democratic Party would like to reel back in before yeah. it disappears from the earth for them. Right. But there's look, if I was them, I would go with Castro. The Buttigieg thing gets them nothing, gets yeah, them it's, nothing. The deep state trust him more, right? And they think he is like Trudeau, like Macron, like Obama. They like his uh, president, Castro or Buttigieg, Booty Booty Gay Gay, yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't understand where his base comes from. I've always been confused. He about has no it. voter base. His right. Base I don't. I mean, so you're going to get those. You're going to get those eight, six percent gay vote anyway. I yeah, mean, what exactly. are you going to get? You're just going to alienate cats who are like saying, "What's with this guy?" You know. They think the uh, Obama model translated into Trudeau and Macron, especially. So they're now obsessed with that model. Uh, to it, to it, but maybe they'll bring Zelensky in and make him American citizen and try to wow, change the constitution, wow. make him president. You know, he could end up with a liquor store like he did from South Vietnam up in in <laughs> in, in in California. You know what I mean? Like you could. Yeah, we'll see how well he really delivered. Is does he get the Batista treatment? You know, the mansions right, right. and the women and, right. the, and and all the rest, or does he get the other treatment? I think, I think he's, he's going to get the full Trotsky at some point. One thing I never knew was that I'd heard crazy stories about when. But I did not know his German Shepherd German language stories. Did you oh, know these? I didn't know that. No, I don't know anything about that. So I mean, I did, you know, his dad, of course, was a bingo parlor runner from upstate New York. That's where the mob ties came. Problem was, he was a compulsive gambler himself and kept getting into debt. And when he died, Steve went had to leave Yale Law School because of how in debt the family was. Okay. Um, and then he got screwed by Howard Hughes and the Feds when the feds were trying to push the mob out because he was a minority owner with them in the new frontier hotel. You, you knew how bitter he was about it. Cause years later he bought the new frontier hotel just to destroy it and put nothing there. And it was just, just his point. But apparently he taught his German shepherds in German, huh. how to intimidate women. 
so that women would do what he told them to do. <laughs> a lot of them workers and masseuses and other, because they were terrified because he would say something in deep, dark German, which is already a guttural language to that's begin kind, with. That's kind but, of interesting. That's so kind that of they interesting. would. You it's know, common though. They, uh, there, there is a a thing about training German shepherds in isn't German the, uh, isn't for there a attacking. Okay. Okay. My dad this? had a German shepherd that understood Yiddish. And my grandmother would send him to the butcher and he would bring back a package of meat in his teeth directly to my grandmother, unmolested by him. And she would speak to him only in Yiddish. So and this was a German shepherd. Didn't Larry David did a whole I thought that was just a Larry David skit. He did. Didn't he do a skit on the a German shepherd that's instructed in German that yes. like has Nazi yes. type responses? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I have to ask my friend Richard Lewis about that. But uh, yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. But the uh, yeah, the German shepherds are you know were used to carry bombs. I think also, right? Didn't they, they use them as, as demolition dogs at one point? That sounds vaguely familiar. Like we had a whole mess of dogs that we <laughs> that we blew to smithereens ourselves, who carried bombs underneath their belly, and then we detonated these dogs <laughs> behind enemy lines. There's a whole dog museum of famous war dogs. All right, so how about so, these super for the record, chats? For the that record, are I had in. nothing to do with that. Yeah. I, I, you know, what's you know, that? Was... Yeah, how about these super chats that are coming in here? Oh, nice segue, uh, Hunley. Way to go. Before we blow up some more dogs. Yeah, thank you. Uh, John of New Zealand wants to know, so Mark, who did win the Battle of the Colts? Was it Moon or Hubbard? Hubbard. Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I guess it depends I, on whether you look at globally or America. Yeah, you have to look at Hubbard's real estate uh, empire because it's vast. They do have real estate money, and Moon... I, Moon has real estate too. I mean, I don't know. That's a. That's a. I don't know. That's a good question. I think Moon may have the numbers though. Uh, yeah, I think globally, it's got the Moon definitely has. Yeah, the numbers. yeah. I'm going to go with Moon on that one. Domestically in America, Scientology and Hubbard have the numbers. Scientology and Hubbard. Yeah. I mean, in there's the a whole. The New York Post two days ago had a cover story. Where is Shelley Miscavige? Mm. They revitalized. Well, oh, oh, hold on. Where is David? Too. They're David both moved gone. to Florida. David no, no, moved. no. They can't find him. Oh, they're, they're, he's wanted. He's wanted. There's some stuff with him. Um, legality. And wasn't so, that trial? Uh, did wasn't there a mistrial and they have to retry the, the uh, sexual assault case? Yes, uh, Masterson. Danny Masterson case. Yeah, he was in town for that. He was in town for the who knows? By maybe the way, David's what, out at sea. Have you guys followed the Murtaugh case at all? That crazy. Uh, I, solicitor? You know, I watched. I watched uh, the Crime Channel. The, the Washington World. The, 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 the Law and Dan Abrams Law and Crime. No, no, no. The or other Nick Mercator. No, no, the one that's on TV, the um, oh, uh, with Vinny and Vinny, what's his name? Who's the host? Court uh, TV? Is it Court, Court TV? TV? Court TV. Court I was TV. watching the coverage on Court TV. It was fascinating. Fast. Well, I didn't see uh, the trial though. The story so far, neither one's defense, neither the prosecution or the defense's story makes sense. Right. Because like the, the the prosecution's has hard things to explain. How was? I mean, why is it that the two guns used or? two guns that he had why is it the ammunition matches him why is it his phone was right near the location of the murders at the time of the murders why did he lie about that on the flip side why are there a second set of tracks why was the son's uh truck missing why were two guns used in the first place uh why was uh, why it was his the mother's phone taken at all why was it thrown in the opposite direction by a different person than him when he was going in a different direction their who, story shot, who shot him for sympathy? Uh, and their motivation doesn't make sense. Now, of right. course, he tried to get now he tried to uh he paid someone to kill him. To kill uh, him. Okay, right, right. In order for the insurance proceeds to go to his son, his right. other son. Wow. Um, there was a maid that died under mysterious circumstances in his house. He got the family to file an insurance claim and then he stole their insurance funds. Wow. Uh he was there was a guy that was killed in a hit and run that was gay that maybe have connected to some other, you know, a secret gay sex scandal. Now, where is this in South Carolina, Robert? South Carolina, or? old low country, South Carolina, old right. plantation country, South Carolina. He, his father, his grandfather, all ran the county as what was called the solicitor, which is an old English tradition that only exists in places in America like the Deep South in, in South Carolina. Uh, half of the community hates him. Half the community uh, supports him. The uh, uh, the his son was on trial for killing another person uh, at the time of his death uh, in a boat accident that appeared to be uh, maliciously reckless. Mm -hmm. um, it was like one thing after the next after mm -hmm. the next. 
So there's all this weird death that surrounds the Dude, family. This is like a, a, a white trash version of Murder on the Orient Express. Yeah. <laughs> well, you, you don't get it, uh, Mark. You, the South, you, you don't get it. Like Midnight of the Garden of Good and Evil, the yeah. Southern eccentric. There, there are some things in the, you know, Tennessee freaking Williams wrote all about it but there are certain things in the south and chattanooga is pretty much south well william Faulkner described it the south is like the rest of the world just a lot more so right more mm. guilt more shame more passion more hate more courage more fiery more evil more righteous all of it there's just more of it right. um and and that was uh uh i mean the genius I and mean, that's what hunter thompson was always trying to chase that grain of sand that william right. Faulkner said you could describe the world in but the uh but this story is like it, it it doesn't when I was listening to it, it reminded me of the OJ case. I was like, the forensic ah. evidence doesn't match the official narrative. It's like there's a mismatch here. It looks it looks like one explanation is that the kid had one gun, he was killed with a double gauge shotgun. That you know meant there was no ammo in the double gauge shotgun. They didn't know the mother was there. They saw the mother, she started to run, they grabbed his gun, went and killed her, then took both guns, left and fled in his truck and disappeared the other possibility is that it was two people uh but the the evidence doesn't support the idea that the father did it by himself and it doesn't even though i think the father is a narcissist for a range of other reasons uh, and his behavior and his history and his biography of recent behavior uh they haven't explained why he would do it at all uh yeah. there's just no apparent well so that, they don't have a motive the, the southern angle is great richard lewis once did a comedy routine where he rewrote TV guide log lines from movies to shorten them. And he did Streetcar Named Desire. And he described the movie as a visitor throws off <laughs> throws off his bowling game when Blanche shows up, you know, like some TV, TV movie version of it. Yeah, I mean, there, Eric is right. That whole Southern Gothic weirdness oh, yeah. down there is just so dark, bro. I mean, I it is creepy. Well, and, it provides and the opportunity, though, for the most noblest of heroes because they face the darkest of adversaries. That's right, what I always right. love about the South. It presents right. both in, in deep polar opposite. What uh, about Angel Heart with Robert De Niro? That great dark, movie. One of my favorite right Dude, there. That's you know, the so way he peels the egg and yes. eats the egg. Yeah. Uh, I mean, all of that was some of the scenes in New Orleans are great. Really the, uh, creepy. Really oh, creepy. yeah. Brilliant revenge. It's really a revenge oh, film. God. Disguised as a horror investigative drama yes, film. Yes. It's a film noir in a way with some spiritual, supernatural mumbo jumbo wrapped around a film noir. Mickey Rourke's best film ever. By the way, somebody, a girl just told me there's a phrase for misogyny uh, as this director of the Emmett Till film pulled a uh, 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 demonstrated the other night she wasn't nominated as best director so she of course flipped out because she didn't get best director nomination she started to go against you know patriarchy and white supremacy and everything else she recently moved here from nigeria and became an american citizen so she now refers to herself as a nigerian american and by law she must attack the country that she came to as you're well aware but this girl was telling me that there's there's a thing called misogyny noir of black women hatred that she was referring to as to why Hollywood didn't give her the nomination as best director for the Emmett Till movie. Just one of the, mm. I just learned that today. I, I didn't know that existed. Misogyny oh. noir. Mono you know what's fascinating is 20 years ago, it, you would never do this because you would be blacklisted permanently from Hollywood if you Blacklisted did this. is not allowed to be used anymore. Yeah, thank you. Oh, Thank God. Uh, by the way, I work in technology. They've changed it so they don't have master and slave connections anymore. No. I'm no. not kidding. That's, what they they called? That's brilliant. Uh, Bravo. Oh, God. I don't know. I'm waiting for male and female to go away because we can't have that. You know, oh, 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 oh. You know it's like, no, it's a non-binary connection. Wow, that's right. There's a lot of work <laughs> to be done. You know, that's why we must integrate the STEM uh, community, Robert, because the stem is the last holdout mm -hmm. of white supremacy. Well, those yep. are my favorite Oscar moments. Remember when they opened up the envelope and he read the wrong one yeah. uh, a couple of years ago? And I explained people it was a trans envelope. Uh, and the <laughs> it identified us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's all. The you know, it was a little surprise. It was a little crying game surprise when you looked inside.
let me tell you something the ratings the tv ratings for the oscars couldn't possibly get any lower and yet they're going to well wait till next think? year yeah no it's coming up in march it's not next year it's it's, oh. it's literally oh, well, see, there you go i don't even know no, it's in march it's I mean, now well that's what i was wondering do you think they'll go top gun uh, to counteract the problem of declining ratings. Any oh, rational, the fact person, that any rational person would. That's why they're not going to. If the Golden Globes was any indication and some of the other things, they're not going to do that. That would make too much sense. There, there's a long shot that they might, though, because, I know, I know. because Tom Cruise isn't up for actor. And right. no, nobody, none of the talent is up well, for anything. So they're yeah. like, oh, we could throw the morons a bone with the best picture, and then we can go with our typical woke bullshit or everything else. Like well, the best other one director had like most important. nine nominations, the uh, which usually is a leading indicator of, of winning, not, not so much in recent years, but yeah. I mean, other than the, the, the whatever of the Banshees or whatever, um, was the, the German remake of All Quiet on the Western Front. Right, right. That's can they allow That's that to win with the Ukrainian war? Well, they've now completely blurred the lines between foreign films and American films. There's no more line anymore. So everything that's nominated is a foreign film. So I, I wonder what is the foreign film category? Because, you know, they, they, that's a German film. Uh, all quiet on the western yeah, absolutely it, it should be in the purely in the foreign film category and so was pa I love parasite. This film. parasite was a korean film it was it, it doesn't was. seem to matter anymore right and but i was like how do you let that movie win when you know they're going to be doing some Zelensky stuff at the oscars Ooh, because that movie is such a deeply anti-war film Ooh, that's a tough one that's a tough ah, we're gonna have to chuck that film well you know what we did we'll put we'll have uh sean pin navigate the uh Sean the, Penn of course. Will, will nominate. Uh, he'll be the nominee for Best Picture. He'll be the guy, the host. Exactly. Exactly. Right? So he'll, wins, he'll control he the envelope. Yeah, he'll control the envelope. He'll burn it up on stage with a cigarette lighter. I exactly. guess James Cameron is showing the future for Hollywood. If you want to make a good movie, just have it nothing to do with all with the real world. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Avatar, yeah. You, there is no cultural commentary because they're well, fake people in a fake world. I got two words for you. Walt Disney. Mm. And Walt Disney. I mean... Go see Bambi when you're a kid. I mean, these movies, you know what I mean? That yeah, That's yeah. the way to, to get both sides. But the Marxists have taken over the studio, so it's not going to happen. They have wow. these groups of people inside there. They only want – what my argument has always been, these are public companies with stockholders. Where are the stockholders saying you can't put out a movie, you know, for 8% of the population? These are public companies, for Christ's sake. And yet they they go along like sheep. I mean, because there, the problem is that I feel like it's been infiltrated so much through the HR department yeah. and the management class that the decision makers are not the CEOs. They're not the stockholders. The CEOs will hire uh, Kathleen Kennedy and let her dumbass run around making decisions underneath. And then they're too afraid to do anything. I, I went over to, I think it was MGM at one point to pitch a movie. It was a heist picture. And I went in, I don't know. I didn't even know the guy. Some gay guy was the executive. And I went over there to pitch this heist movie. He was bored. He was looking up at the ceiling. He couldn't care less. And then at the end, he said, Mark, can I pitch you an idea? I go, okay. He said, I had a dream last night. This was during the OJ trial, Robert. You'll appreciate this. He said, I had a dream last night. And in my dream, there was Judge Ito in his black robe. And there was about 20 of them. And he was dancing around these 20 dancing Judge Itos would you be interesting, interested in writing a musical about dancing Judge Ito's? Shut up. So I go, let me, let me be, I'll be right back. I'm just going to go to the bathroom. He goes, okay. So I go to the bathroom, take a leak, get in my car and drive home. And that was the end of the meeting. <laughs> oh God. Okay. Let me get some more super chats. Uh, JG, an MD here that operated and trained under three of the surgeons that were in trauma room one on that fateful day. Thank you for keeping the research alive. Love you. Yeah, both. we're going to do That's Charles cool. Crenshaw. I told Eric before the show, we're going to do um, the doctor that LBJ called on the phone to get the deathbed confession. If there was one from Oswald with uh, a secret service agent who had his gun sticking out of the back of his pants, wearing a medical smock and LBJ referred Crenshaw to that guy with the gun sticking out of the back of his pants uh, Crenshaw was then later discredited and said that LBJ never called. And the operator uh, found the piece of paper that uh, and vouched for Crenshaw a couple of years later that LBJ did call him. Mm. Uh, Little Rock's got a couple questions in here about Florida. Um, Robert, 
Um, is there enough federal work in Florida to make it worth the move? I don't want to have to take a new bar exam. And again, I want to move to Florida. I want to practice law, but I don't want to retake bar exam. What area of federal law would you recommend to make the transfer from state to fed and survive? Yeah. I mean, but the problem is to appear in federal court in Florida, you typically have to be a member of the uh, Florida state bar. Ah, interesting. Uh, Sorry. Okay, Little Rock again. Can a one-legged man drive a race car in Vegas, or are they standard shift? That I don't know. I've actually That's never fun. done it. I've driven I by and thought it, yeah. that would look fun. You know, the, the, to do a race car around a racetrack would it would seem kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, but I, I haven't never done it, so I don't know. All right. Um, bass player 2011 if I send the homeless to the Cecil Hotel. Someone or something will take care of them. They, they already have filled a Cecil Hotel to the brim. So they're way ahead of you on that one, bro. And the I water think, tower is still on the roof if you want to go swimming like that Asian chick did in the uh, documentary. I did love that film where the, the premise is that there's a secret hotel for hideouts mm -hmm. and people that need medical treatment of criminals with Jodie Foster. That was one of the old school downtown L.A. hotels. Oh, I don't I forget the name that. of it, but it, it was good. It was a fun film. I don't remember that. All right, get some rubble rants real quickly, and I'll go back and forth. We got a bit of a backlog. Uh, Seymour SR. So is Memphis going to go full Minneapolis tonight? Is no. Memphis going to go full? What's tonight? I don't uh, know. Oh, because of riots over the shooting, I assume police shooting. Oh, oh, oh I, see. I see. I see. Right. Well, as Tucker pointed out, Antifa is back, bigger than ever. And it could be a sign of attacking Joe Biden. That was Tucker's take on it. It's interesting they went to Atlanta. Because like yeah. the first time they've, they've gone a little bit out of their comfort zone, but it tells you where Atlanta is politically. Well, also they picked up the woman who's a Senate minority whip son who she claimed was his, her daughter. They just <laughs> go figure that one out. He was arrested and let go uh, without bail. But the January 6th people still uh, can't get justice. No, of course. Yeah, I got a hush, hush, new hush, hush up at Viva Barnes Law dot locals.com that's about january 6th because that was my first ever hush hush it was a, mm. a two-year retrospective how accurate that first hush hush was wow very nice nicely played my friend is it the japanese internment of the modern era legally in your home uh, a, a kind of but but nowhere near the scale that that uh, that still is I mean, the, but me. the japanese had softball teams robert well, and lived well, in on America. scale the worst constitute uh, depending on how you feel about the constitutionality of slavery right the most unconstitutional action in american history in my view was the internment. that's my view also yeah i think it trumps trumps the japanese internment. <laughs> you guys kill me <laughs> it's like there is an art somebody's gonna have to teach me how to keep a flow going because i'm like okay to, oh shit. It, it's just <laughs> It's completely subconscious, Eric. It's not, it's not a conscious thing. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't know who Kay Griggs is. Somebody saw two hours of an interview with uh, Kay Griggs. Can you shed some light on it? I don't know uh, who that is. I can't. I don't know who it is. Uh, uh, let me see. Might, I'll try to look it up, baby. Yeah. Somebody yeah. in the chat might tell us who it is. Uh, Mark and LBJ's women, Princess Margaret had contact with him, and LBJ is the only POTUS to not have a state dinner with Queen Elizabeth II. That's right. What are the chances that she did try on the bathing suit? I think she rejected the bathing suit is the, is the reason that they didn't have their dinner. That, I think he attempted the bathing suit, but not every bathing suit try on uh, successful, Eric. Well, you know, Jumbo's got to, you know, Jumbo's Jumbo gotta... has failures too. He's not 100% accurate. I mean, Jumbo <laughs> takes his losses. All right. A um, couple more from um, Rumble. I'll just roll these two together. Fleet Lord at VAR saying, it's like Christmas. Uh, Robert Barnes on Freeform twice in a month. Yeah. Which is yeah, fantastic. Really, really and I appreciate it, Robert. Even better would be four times in a month. But anyway, um, Fleet Lord at VAR also is asking if you, Mark, consider doing a stream with Jimmy Dore and he does not see a buy me a coffee option. Mark is a boomer. If he doesn't have somebody set up his payment yeah, stuff. Yeah, Eric has to gonna... set up everything. I, you know, I emailed or direct messaged uh, Jimmy Dore the other day asking that question. I told him, I don't know if he knows who I am, but he lives in town here. He had on a guy who directed a documentary on George Carlin. And I, and I saw this episode. It's basically a clip show. I think it was on HBO Max or something. I'm not really sure where it was. I'm going to have to find it. But uh, I knew Carlin pretty well. And there were things in that episode that they didn't know about George. So I, I reached out to Jimmy Dore about it. So I, I haven't heard back. So we'll see what happens. Cool. And uh, Fleet Lord Atvar is saying, I guess we're doing good today. Uh, by the way, panel, we don't mind people not talking over each other. It's not hearing what they said that makes it more frustrating. 
Okay. Today is superior and far more enjoyable being able to hear their statements. I'm delighted to hear that. Uh, but it's it's just fun to watch Viva try to communicate and not get this get a word in edgewise. Yeah, no, I enjoy that. I, I I mean, I didn't know he had so many people in his family. Is he the youngest of five? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He's right. So kid. he's been trying to do this his entire life. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Which yeah. makes it even more funny. I have three. I mean, there's three of us, my brothers, and we've been you know three of us, not five, but the same thing kind of happened in my family. You know where we had to like fight over each other to get. Oh, her. I was the fifth of this uh, uh, of six, but we were spread out. We were spread out, yeah. And you had girls. Girls don't count in that uh, <laughs> that battle to the death of uh, the political. I mean, we used to watch. Somebody mentioned this. We used to watch McLaughlin and Company together as a family. I mean, think about a politicized. We watched Meet the Press together as a family. Back well, you know, uh, my brother for years. I got my way because I would always threaten. I was like, "Mom, he's being mean to me." And my brother, like years later, had all this guilt. He was like, I know I was really mean to you when I was little. I was like, I made all that up. That was totally <laughs> that fake. Was He's like, hold on a second. <laughs> I've had this guilt for 30 years. And then you, I was like, yeah, it worked. <laughs> You're like, oh, it was effective. Yeah, I, like I was like four years old. I was really, all I had to do is say, mommy's being mean. And I can get him to do whatever I wanted. I didn't figure out until years, years later. I thought I dominated him in this little game of backdoor basketball. Right. Uh, and then I figured out, uh, Hold on, uh, hold on, backyard basketball. I was like, hold on a second. Uh, I started looking at, at where we had the little basket, and everything else, and he was twice as tall as I was. And I figured out, oh, he was letting me win all those years. Oh, oh, that's great. That's great. As he should. Okay, uh, Basil Beshkov, thank you very much. Eisenhower warned of the military industrial complex. Kennedy got the memo in Dallas. I yep. wish I just would have had the cojones to do say it while he was president, not when he was walking right, out the door. Right, right. Nobody remembers his in, his warning against uh, herpes. That speech is is really covered <laughs> up over the years. I speak, look it up if you can find the herpes speech. Okay. <laughs> uh, Little Rock, if I buy for the Vegas trip and don't get my prosthetic in time, will there be a way to gift the ticket to someone else on your channels? <laughs> oh yeah, we'll make we'll make sure that uh, people can do that. All right. And I, I'm not sure if we're able to or not. I, I mean, have you coordinated with Rakeda on everything or no? Rakeda, I think, is doing his thing on Sunday night. And yes. we're going to do our thing probably on Saturday night. Okay. Oh, oh, okay. So what should Perfect. we do? Go with your thing? Will we be part of your thing? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go to both. I'll be at uh, oh, I'll I'll go over to Rakeda's yeah. thing. I got you. Rakeda's, I think, live streaming a show. Okay. Um, I don't know if we'll do that. I don't think we'll do that. Okay. I think I think we'll do more of a traditional get together, meet and greet. Maybe right. have some po maybe take some of our memes, make them into posters, sign some oh, meme posters, oh, oh, stuff like that. You know. Wow. That'd be cool. Okay. We, and you say we should come dressed as historical American figures? Yeah, exactly. I, I like that. <laughs> okay, uh, Georgina, always a great show to listen. Thanks for all you do, Eric, Mark, Robert. I think Freeform Friday is one of my favorites. So the banter, Georgina, one of our top top fans. Um, amazingly supportive uh basify 211 fi which is such a weird one yep carnegie would go to scotland and frick the prick would break in the pinkertons to break uh, the strikes frick along with carnegie melon and the rest caused the jones johnstown flood by lowering the dam yeah that's famous the johnstown flood is oh rob i wanted to ask you do you think they'll send um F-111 fighters to Zelensky or jet planes or anything after the, the tanks? The Germans have been clear. I think the Germans are still paranoid that all this is really for the Poles right. to uh, take back Western Ukraine because the right. Germans came out today and said, no airplanes, period. Ever. Oh, okay. No airplanes, period. Oh, I didn't know. Okay, great. Thank you. I Great. I remember to ask you that. Wow. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. But wow. they're, they're going to be tempted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. cool. Easiest way to ex escalate that war. Yes, 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 yes. All right, uh, Pasha. Yeah, he already got the other name. Mark, you need to get your Zoftig coffee cup on the merch page. I'm trying to cut down to just one cup of coffee per day. That's funny. Uh, That's funny. Right into Ziggy Shrug. You're on Locals. Be sure to tag her. Maybe there's something in the middle. Probably needs to be a different material, though, because I don't think Mark could carry that full of liquid. Oh, the uh, the one that she sent me? I think yeah. that's a custom-made design she made for me. Yeah. I don't think she's selling that. Um <laughs> Um, JFK Jr. crashed his plane or was he taken out? Seems like I, no, I'm, I'm gonna research said. Thing, uh, for uh, 
for a future hush hush. Well, you know, what, look, what who you? am I? Look, I don't even know anymore. He could, he could have been taken out for a while. My initial take is no, but I'll explore right. what the alternative is. I know there was weather the problems. I know he flew upside down for like a thousand miles <laughs> upside down, thinking the earth was below him. I, I, oh, I wow. well, look, accidents do happen. I mean, the guy was a oh, Michigana. Yeah. He was a Michigana with the plane. So, you know. The uh, but I'll I'll explore what the alternative narratives are and see what okay. the best arguments are for right them, on. even if it's not what I happen to believe. Right. Okay, we got uh, Etienne de Gaulle. I don't know what currency that is. MX is interesting. Have you heard all the con- people that really believe JFK? You know, a big key to the J- QAnon movement was spreading the idea that JFK Jr. was still alive and was coming back. Oh, yeah. I didn't, oh. know, I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. They tapped into the Kennedy assassination. <laughs> right, right. And they tapped right. into their desire for independent research and looking at things for themselves and yeah. plotting patterns. And they took their best traits and used them against Well, them. they have deep stated this uh, JFK assassination uh, studies for years, you know, bringing yeah. in authors they've created out of thin air and sending them to conferences. Me and Hunley were at some of these conferences where these deep state actors appear with their books. They have deep state publishers i mean it's an it's an industry within an industry robert yep. you know of creating their own uh icons inside the jfk assassination uh, world all right uh etienne de gaulle eric i work in it also there's talk of renaming one of our products because it has the word native in it as in cloud native <laughs> oh that would be what is it? Native that was so perfect there's so many <laughs> memes available related to renaming someone should like create a fake woke uh, the how the tech industry institutionalized racist and sexist oppression and <laughs> focus on all the terms and take well, terms like Robert, native. You know who's missing out on this? I mean, Scott Adams, leave your Instagram model alone and get to work because yeah. this is Dilbert. Well, remember the, <laughs> the, the group of, 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 of academics who wrote the phony woke uh, stuff? Yeah, well, that's how James Lindsay got his Yeah, brain. James Lindsay. Right. That's okay, how he yeah. started out. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. him. Yeah. And he got actual academic publications to publish this utter, inane, insane nonsense. Right. Lesbian, oh, dog, like, lesbian uh, dogs were one of them, I think. Yeah, it was dog copulation stuff. I, oh, yeah, right, yeah. And right. it was, oh, it was full on. That's Lampoon stuff, bro. That's Alabama. Well, no, I actually, That's National Lampoon's. you know what? You should get somebody to go through old National Lampoon's, rewrite it with the you know proper dialogue, and then submit it as studies. Oh, wow. is uh, uh, it, National Lampoon is fly. functioning anymore, or is it? No, uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay, Owen Jones, I fell in love and engaged with a girl from locals. I'm a plumber from Mary. What is this? Is this Ann Landers? They think this. Uh, is I don't know. Column or something? A love line? What's the deal? Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, it's uh, great. Yeah, the he uh, uh, he became friends with someone on locals, and they end up uh, meeting up in person. Like our upcoming in oh, person meetup. Oh, I see. So it's a happy. Yeah, maybe that'll be part of the pitch for the Viva Bars oh, Law Locals meetup. There you go. Oh, you okay. might get married and engaged like Owen. Yeah, oh, no, that's okay. cool. Okay, so uh, yeah. He, what no, should I do to make a lot of money to have a big family in Oklahoma? Uh, get connected to oil or steal from Indians? Well, you got those Ukrainians running around there shooting people. That's so true. forget that's about true. Oklahoma. Set up a deep state operative center. Oh, also, wasn't Elohim state. City the deep state operation connected to Oklahoma City in Oklahoma too? Well, oh. don't forget the one in Indiana where they, they, they had the drive-by shooting of the Dutch sh- soldiers who were training in Indiana. That's right. Outside that of Indianapolis. Ukrainian conflict, that's right. There was a phony city there that they created for the Dutch and others, obviously, to uh, use, you know, there's always William- the border south, like Mena, Arkansas. It's where they always. Well, he's got one in Williamsburg, right, Eric? Don't you have the by the farm? Well, have yeah, you ever no, been to Fort, uh, what's that Fort in Georgia oh. where we train all the dictators to torture people? Oh, the School of the Americas. Yes, yes. Yeah. Where is that in Georgia? North Georgia. Outside of Fort Benning, I guess. Near, yes, near, yes. Yeah. Probably. Um, oh, okay. Somebody um, on locals, Pat McDonald's, is saying that JFK Jr. was not instrument rated. Uh, Paul Wellstone died because the pilots were misled by instruments. Okay. Bill Clinton was the last person as congressional aide to see hogs off to Alaska. Also the crew that crashed in Europe. Okay. Hmm, thank you. Yeah. I mean, it could I mean, be. Yeah, I, mean, I mean, I mean, plane crashes are a convenient way to get rid of somebody. There are yeah. also accidents that happen. 
Okay, and you were talking about in Eastern Europe. They're very popular. (laughs) Well, the Ron Brown one is still my favorite. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, No, we're going to send you on a commerce trip while you're under the middle of a grand jury investigation threatening to flip on the entire Democratic political machine, for which you have information going back decades to your dad running the Elite Hotel in Harlem. And, uh, hey, can you take a commerce trip to a war-torn region in Central Europe for us? Okay, I'm on the plane. I'm getting on board. And then the, somehow he survived the plane crash. It's like something in the script you could even come up with. He survives the plane crash, so they have to whack him on the ground. Well, I would put cannibals on the ground like they do in Yellow Jackets, the uh, series where the girls' soccer team crash lands and then encounters cannibals, and then they have to eat each other, and some of them survive and run for office when they come back. I Again, Yellow Jackets, not the greatest series, but Let, one uh, of the most uh, unusual uh, premises. Lesbians eating each other? Okay. The, well, not uh, les- but- no, no, there is one black lesbian who's running for office <laughs> as a side, one well, of the characters. I, was, I watched that film of those, like that soccer team or whatever that went down in Peru or something. Yeah, that like. was real. That was a real story. That the was problem great. was it was so poorly done when they yeah. decided to start eating each other. I was just laughing. I just couldn't stop. I was like, I know I shouldn't be laughing. You shouldn't it be was, laughing, Robert. Well, it was like the Second City parody. I went with a corporate law firm, right? We went to this. I was interning and clerking at this corporate law firm. We go to a Second City production in Chicago, right? Uh, you know the foundation of Saturday Night Live, and, it, and we went to one of their politically incorrect shows. And this was after Christopher Reeves had had his accident, right? And so they did this dramatic Superman skit, and you have the right. dramatic Superman music, and Superman came out in a wheelchair, and I fell off the chair laughing. I was just oh. like, I could stop. Wait, wait, he's wearing the Superman costume? Wearing the Superman costume, oh. but he's in a wheelchair, oh. and I was like, I just couldn't stop. And uh, you, oh. you. That was the moment I knew nobody with nobody at that table was ever going to let me have a corporate job. Oh. <laughs> the, I was like, that, I care. that was <laughs> actually Reeve himself doing it. No, it wasn't Reeves himself. It was, oh, it okay. was right after Reeves had had his accident. Ooh. Well, yeah. because I've heard that Reeves actually probably be laughing with you. He would. I, he, I, I heard he, he had he a pretty been, good sense of humor. He had a great humor. sense of humor, all of that. But it wasn't politically correct at the time. It still wasn't no, as good as their other soon. routine, which also <laughs> got me into trouble, which was a song called I Wish I Was Retarded. Oh, wow. That sounds like a South Park uh, theme song or something. Oh, it was so funny. Oh, it was great. By the way, the Farrelly brothers have a new movie coming out with more retards in it for anyone who likes the oh, Farrelly Oh, yeah, I love the Farrelly brothers. Yeah, I used to, I had to make the... Um, something uh, about Mary. No, no, not something about Mary. What's the one with Dumb and Dumber where they had Is the Mary? puppy... They had the where, puppy... Where he cleaning. doesn't understand why his uh, four kids are not the same race as him? Yeah, they, we had the puppy cleaning van with the dog ears, the van that... that that went around cleaning up dogs. And, and, I thought that and, is Dumb and Dumber. It's Dumb and Dumber, right? Yeah, 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 myself and... I'm thinking of the other one that Jim Carrey was in where he has two personalities. It is schizoid part comes right, out. That's, yeah, and Dumb and Dumber, myself also and Sidney Bartholomew, the art director I was living with, had to create those vans in the backyard. We made two of them for the movie with the with the rugs, with the shag rugs on the van, the dog cleaning van. Wow. Um, okay, uh, let me get through a few more. Uh, Fuzzy Creature could... Antifa be CIA captured and not FBI captured. I think Antifa is a legitimate independent organization. Yeah, it, has uh, it, came, it, it, it came out of West Germany originally in the yeah. 80s, Robert. Well, I think it was no, before it that. Green it goes all the way back to the, the nomenclature was from <laughs> the old brown shirt, black shirt front uh, fi- uh, communist fights yes. of the 1920s yeah. and 30s. Yes. The and original Antifa name, anti fascist had a German name in the 1930s as the front for the communists. Another film tip is the Bader Meinhof gang film, which is uh, a German film, which is really interesting about the Bader Meinhof gang. Right. Uh, and then there's a Jean Le Carré film about, was it, uh, what's her name is in it? Um, little, uh, what's that name? It plays the, the, the one that ends up uh, being part of one of the radical German gang, German uh, radical groups that were so popular in the seventies there, all their radical groups. Oh, what was the name of that character movie? I want to say like Little Red Riding Hood, but that, that's oh. wrong, obviously. But it's something like that. Don't forget Maybe the somebody... Red Brigade. Don't forget the Red Brigade, which was the and Japanese. I think, that, I think that that character is loosely connected to that. Okay. Uh, maybe can somebody can remember that. I don't think the name of it was. Uh, what was the name of that John Le Carre book about that? that Maybe somebody will remember in the, in the, uh, uh, in the chat. Yeah, sure. All right, Grow Bear, when are you doing a local meetup in Arizona? Yeah, it's got a big, beautiful place. Then we're going to Vegas, going to Vegas right? Yeah, we're going to Vegas. Mm-hmm. Go to Vegas. Oh. Now, if we did anything in Arizona, we might as well do it connected to the Super Bowl. That's, that's what I thought. Right. Yeah, I thought yeah. the same thing last week. But this sounds like it's a replacement. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. okay. Carrie Gr- Kay Griggs was the wife of the Marine Corps uh, Colonel George Griggs. Okay. She talks about Cherry Marines. 
Oh, Little Drummer Girl. That's the Le Carre book. Yep. Oh, oh right, yeah. right. Little Drummer Girl. Uh, James Miller, did you see the renaming Fort Benning because its name dates back to the Confederacy? So they're not going to change Fort Benning to quit training Latin American dictators to torture and kill dissidents. They're no. just going to rename it. Just, just right. rename. Well, Here's there's rename. also Fort Lee. Got to get rid of that. So I mean, what's the appropriate Fort name Jackson for the torture center? Well, what would be a good appropriate, you know, wink and a nod name to rename Fort Benning? Oh, uh, cultural. Uh, it would be like a good Nazi cultural. name to pick, but that wouldn't people wouldn't capture right away. Hmm. Interesting. We'll have to think about that. Um, how what about pa how about Paperclip University? Yeah, there you go. Pay, uh, or the what was the guy that uh, was the German that we we worked with extensively? The, Otto? the Galen organization was that was their oh, uh, or gay for Galen, Galen, Galen. Or for Galen for Galen. That would be a for Galen. Point. Okay, I could go with that. All right, that's uh, pretty good. Uh, if there's a meetup, we could play a fun game of guess the Fed. Extra point for also guessing no, the agency. No. It'll be the it'll be the person who keeps asking me, "Don't we need to be violent? Don't, don't we need to? Yeah. Don't we need to use guns, Barnes? Stop don't pushing you me around. Stop pushing that, me." That or the guy that uh, you know the clients always call up and say, uh, "How can I hear you can help me avoid paying taxes?" <laughs> yeah, that, that, that oh. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And this one's for you, Mark. What? Any moderate or conservative Hollywood people left? Oh, there's tons of them. They just, you know, I mean, Stallone, quiet. Bruce they Willis. Keep it yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys. I mean, uh, Mel Gibson, Schwarzenegger. I mean, I, obviously a lot of them at the end of their careers, but there's younger guys who keep to themselves. Oh, yeah, yeah. We know Eric is the Fed. Thanks, Dirk. Yeah, he was at Guantanamo, just saying. That's right. How do we <laughs> know? He did know? He did know legal bites. Right. Anybody oh. connect? Uh, is connect this going to be dots. a new meme? At the, we're getting toward yeah. the end of the show, and Barnes is going to slide in the uh, the legal bite. I'm going to Lithuania for his honeymoon. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, maybe I'll find Oswald there. Yeah, Oswald. The go Oswald. Somebody <laughs> took my grow bear already. It's already gone, Huntley. I just got well, another girl took my grow bear. Well, you know oh, where to order God. them. There you go. I got to order well, again. Well, well where can they order, Eric? Eric, where do they order this crap? We have links down below. Um, there should be a merch shelf, but there's there is if it's not there because it's YouTube and they're crazy, you can always go look in the description for merch. It's there. I definitely, definitely appreciate it. Ooh, Fort McCain. There you go. Fort McCain. You're right. You're right. That would right. be absolutely How about Fort right. Fort McCain eye patch guy. Like, they want after him. Oh, uh, yeah. Fort, Fort, Fort Crenshaw. Crenshaw. Fort Camp Crenshaw. Crenshaw. Uh, we'd have Fort, oh, McCain, Fort McCain and Camp Crenshaw. Great. Because you have the guy that was tortured and the guy that back torture. So it's like, it's, you, you got the combo. I always That's wanted, whenever I saw McCain, I just wanted to say, hey, raise your hand if you love America. Oh. You know, oh. <laughs> oh. Didn't Somebody Bob, was saying oh, the other day, Barnes is, Barnes is so evil. You know, when, he, when McCain died, he said, you always, you always break open a bottle of champagne when fascists die. And I was like, heck, yeah, you do. That's right. That's right. Didn't Bob Dole talk about himself in the third person? Yeah. Didn't he, he, Bob Dole would have done this. If Bob, if Bob Dole. Oh, I've it. always loved Bob Dole because of his 1976 vice presidential debate. If we uh, counted up all the dead from the Democrat wars, and I was oh, like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. old populist republicanism coming back a yeah, little yeah. bit. Yeah, yeah. Wow, good point. <laughs> okay, so what is coming up, Barnes? Do you have a show tonight? Oh, oh yeah. no, no. Uh, nothing on my end until, uh, you know, obviously Sunday, Law for the People. Uh, next week's uh, sidebar. I don't know who next week's sidebar is, actually. We have the rest of February worked out. We're going to have that Star Wars girl, Nina Infinity, and the Duran on. Wait, who did you uh, just have on sidebar the other day? Uh, well, Viva interviewed Jimmy Dore on Thursday. Oh, right. That's what I got to see. And then we had Alex that. Jones on. on oh, I saw that. Okay. That was cool. That was cool. So, yeah. Both of those were fun. Viva did a great job. No, you uh, and I have to go on with Alex Jones when he's hosting Robert. So we oh, can yeah. have like a, a trio of, of, uh, conspiracy guys talking the, the big stuff. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> big stuff. I love the it. big stuff. The real <laughs> the crazy. Stuff. We got to get into harp and weather control and the Chinese. Oh, oh yeah. I mean, I mean, he's always covered. I remember I had like some random thing that I'd seen once, and I was asking him, "I was like, have you ever?" And he just started quoting it from me. Oh yeah. Uh, I was like, I mean, that cloud oh, over God. Turkey the other day that looked like a giant mm -hmm. vagina. I mean, I'm sure. Oh, Jones yeah, that was, was weird. That what was, really was that? Weird. Bro, what was that? 
Yeah, and Whoa. they still haven't explained whatever that thing was in Cuba and other places they were using right, to right. somehow cause people to get sick. Yeah, they, we got to get on his show because uh, he'll let us talk and Hunley always pulls Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, okay, <laughs> on that note then, fine. Let, let, let me be guilty of it. No. <laughs> so next Tuesday, uh, we have a show. We're not going to say what oh, it yeah, is, but you definitely want to see it. Yeah. It is a surprise. It's, it's a very famous, important. Very famous or person. Unfamous entertainment figure. Um underground entertainment figure let me put it that way and comedy and and, and, and very important to the entire fabric and of the yeah, show yeah comedy a comedy guy very famous or infamous put it that way it'll be entertaining for sure all right and then on locals i have a grill stream tomorrow i hope to see everybody Un in locals unstructured.locals.com some people are Thank trying you. to blow up hunley's uh grill stream too his other channel so keep an eye on that <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, on that note, see everyone soon. Thanks.